Uh, it's my privilege to introduce Kapil Goyal, sir. Uh, Kapil Goyal, you are practicing lawyer at uh, Supreme Court, High Court, and uh, Tax Tribunals. Uh, he is a commerce graduate and qualified chartered accountant and fellow member of our institute. Uh, he is a specialized lawyer in direct tax litigations. He has argued several landmark cases at High Court on wide ranging issues of reassessment and search assessments. Till this time, more than 2,000 cases he had represented at various judicial forums, including High Court and ITAT. Further, he has addressed more than 2,000 seminars across country and more than 200 webinars at various ICA platforms. Uh, Mr. Goyal keeps a special interest in constitutional studies. Mr. Goyal keeps a special interest in constitutional studies and keeps interest in how constitution of India could be used by chartered opponent in a day-to-day -day regulatory and representation practice before tax or other authorities. He has authored various papers on various di direct tax and uh, constitution interplay issues widely circulated among uh, tax professionals. Uh, he is taking keen and active interest in spreading and sharing updated knowledge on latest uh, jurisprudence on direct taxes. Uh, without much delay, I welcome uh, Kapil Goyal, sir, to handle today's session. Over to Kapil, sir. Wanakam. I'm sorry. I have started getting to know some Tamil words, sir. <clears throat> and that's due to grace of Lord Ayappa. I'm living in Rohini in Delhi in the part where Opposite to my residence, Lord Ayappa Temple is there. So, I am today here amongst you uh, in the midst of my great larger family due to Panna Raji. He said to me, Mr. Goel, this time you have to be here. And I also missed to come south for a long time, I believe. But yes, it's a special occasion for me to be here amongst you, standing here in this National Conference of C Institute. I always say it like this, sir, that I'm really, I feel really when we are all witnessing one very important thing happening in the country, Lord Ram Temple. So I see myself fortunate that I'm part of this great family of chartered accountants. So <clears throat> today, although you are very all learned and very seasoned and senior practitioners of the tax, I'm nobody to educate you or teach you something. But definitely it's an idea like this, a dialogue where we share our sentiments. And sharing of sentiments, as some scholar has said, some at times brings new, uh, what you say, venues or new thoughts. So dialogue should always go on. So I was reading one book authored by a very classical legal eagle, somebody of who, whom you want to read. A book has been authored by Dama Shishayadri Naidu. He has been a great judge, tax judge. Now he has taken retirement and he's now a senior advocate on interpretation of statutes. I was reading his book in the flight. It just came, sir. So this word, he has his lordship, ex-lord, former judge of the Kerala High Court and Bombay High Court. He has said in his book <laughs> that we must always have this dialogue of exchange of thoughts and ideas and especially on the and Uttam Chalani, Uttam Janji is uh, sitting here and his messages keeps me always charged up. So uh, <coughs> what I was submitting is that when you when you keep thinking and as a chartered accountant, Panaraji is our habit as a chartered accountant, I myself feel it's and it's a good habit that you keep thinking. And we sometimes tend to also cross that, uh, sometimes tend to cross that innocuously, that Lakshman Rekha of excessive thinking. And why that happens? In the jest and the zeal to help the taxpayer find justice. I was asking a question to my, uh, to our great SIRC people who have been kind enough to give me company in the lunch that we are, where do we we where do we get from uh, a sense of uh, what do you say assurance that if a taxpayer is being harassed or illegally assessed that he will get justice 
what is that remedy which we can suggest a taxpayer if he is being assessed arbitrarily, illegally, unlawfully, unconstitutionally? What is the remedy which can be a tax consultant can advise and, and suggest to his client? That is how this process of remedy finding starts, sir. What is the melody here? You know the word melody, na? The melody is this, that you don't, for, for this, uh, sorry, I'm saying with all due humility at my command, that I don't find any effective, sensible remedy. You will say, Mr. Goel, you sound negative in saying this statement. I'm not negative. I'm trying to be a bit more realistic because when I see the tax litigation around me, then I find that it is becoming day by day more and more difficult to get the justice in the tax assessments and the tax adjudications. The reason for me, my this opening submission and statement is this, sir, humble reason. That <clears throat> if supposingly a taxpayer is being assessed in a high pitched tax assessment, you all are aware about the concept of Although this concept, sorry, when we qualified, I qualified in 2004, sir. So at that time when our seniors, we, we were not having this what too much in place. Please don't take me otherwise. Everything said from academic heart. So now when I am in 2024, this word has been become a subject matter of very excessive uh, discussion. Ki why these high peace assessments are happening? And what is this high pitch assessment committee doing in this country, which is being formed at such a great level? This is the moot point. Are these committees only on paper? Or are these committees able to help the taxpayer where high pitch assessments are made? High pitch assessment is what? This is an assessment where return income, sir, is assessed multiple times. You supposedly your taxpayer filed one lakh rupees return, and in his assessment, with all what do you say? May God bless us to see. I why, why make this prayer like this? Ki if somebody has to make a prayer for somebody, na, so then he has to make this prayer like this. Ki, Sab, God bless us, God save us from this section 68 to 69D and 115BB. Aap kenge, Mr. Goel, why you are saying like this? You know, sir, why I'm saying this is that magical section where assessed assess income se jada tax demand. Well, if demand outcrosses the Tax income and this power, horsepower is there in 115 BB. Now, sir, question comes, what is the remedy against this kind of assessments? High piece tax assessments, astronomical assessments. So you, I thought that if one has to go to the statutory process, we all know, sir, there is a statutory process, appellate mechanism, revision mechanism, rectification mechanism. But all with you again, sorry. All these mechanisms, I don't know, work at which speed when it comes to getting justice to the SSE. Across country, my feedback from you is this, that Mr. Goel, our appeals are languishing in first appeal. Is it in healthy state of affairs? Or is it that appellate remedy an effective remedy? Or is it worthy to be called as a remedy in the first place itself? That's the moot point. With all due respect, sir. there's this appeal I file. You don't decide it for four years. In between interginum, you start recovering using coercive methods, attach my bank accounts, goes to my debtors, etc., blah, 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 and you do everything. You go on with penalties also. So at one side, if you gave me an assurance that Mr. Goel, there is a statutory process of remedy under section 246 capital A, first appeal authority is there and he will give me relief and justice. I'm sorry, the theory, practical and theory are different. The practical experience tells us that the, to get the justice from first appeal is not that easy. And that too in the time bound manner, expeditious man. Who has to ensure it? Anyhow, that's one side of the story. Now, I just compare it in the beginning itself that if you want to advise your, uh, if I want to, if I am to advise my assessee, sir, he said, you can go against this high pitch tax assessment to high court under writ petition. All of you are aware about writ petition, sir. Not otherwise, I just want to ask who is not aware about writ petition, sir. And this is for a point I am making this submission. That if somebody 
who says that now in tax world sir pratham ji sir panaraj ji somebody has to say me ki that mr goel as a, as a tax consultant i am talking broadly ki that i am not aware about tax uh, this writ remedy see only remedy if at all is there is the writ remedy sir please don't take me in this sense that mr kapil goel is now becoming an advocate practicing in high court he is saying for his bread and butter i am already given so much of bread and butter i say ki baba mujhe nahi chahiye case zyada already i am having so much of case main nahi kar pa raha hu sir i am not able to do the justice to my client sometimes because 100 days i have to fight against 148 assess this reopening i don't know and they, that gives me again cons, uh, consent factor as a chartered accountant that if i am to I advise my all clients to go to writ petition for getting the justice like a beggar or prostrating like a beggar and you, and the life of a uh, tax payer is this ki that you give him a show cause notice which has which has nothing in the name of show cause notice what is this show cause notice sir then you make assessments arbitrary sorry coming back to my mind you apply 68 69 you apply 115 bb you don't give natural justice you don't give virtual hearing you don't give proper show cause notice what is that basic principle of natural justice are not this kapil goel is not saying talk about just madras high court justice krishnan rama swami the current tax bench justice rama murthy justice anita suman this is mahadevan writing so many judgments from uh, madras high court honorable that this is these assessments are infected they are initiated because there is no application of mind they are made in undue haste they are in violation of principle of most common and when mr shivangnanam saab was there my favorite one of the favorite judges justice shivangnanam He is now in Calcutta High Court. I had some occasion to appear in last week before him in Calcutta High Court. So, oh, what I was thinking, sir, if I am to advise my assessee as a tax consultant that what is the remedy against the high pitch tax assessment? One side there is a uh, remedy, a statutory remedy of so-called appeal remedy and rectification, etc., which gives us a uh, theoretical hope. If I say in most case words, and the other side is the writ remedy. no writ remedy is a remedy not a statutory remedy it's a constitutional remedy now what is that constitutional remedy sir my seniors are sitting here sir you will remember all of you will appreciate that this is that remedy where supreme court has said in so many judgments that article 226 and article 227 of constitution of india gives powers to the high court to reach to injustice wherever it is found there is a judgment of supreme court dwarka nath versus income tax officer this is a leading judgment on article 226 under income tax law panaraji dwarka nath versus ito that article 226 is one of the most important search light provision what is told about article 226 the beautiful word is given is it's a search light it gives us the, that back end of justice and hope of justice that where high courts are empowered under constitution of india under article 226 and 227 that wherever injustice is found that can be remedied that can be injustice i will just come to this slightly later because i have to speak for at least 2 hours and i am already late sir please uh, i am sorry i did not apologize for the delay due to the weather god not kind on uh, fog there so much and cold our flight got late sir i apologize hold it so i was talking about article 226 and 227 that power given to the high courts under constitution of india that wherever injustice is done that can be remedied and there is a landmark judgment of supreme court in income tax law that was a context of 264 you remember sir 264 all of you that 264 is a revision remedy and when you go to cit there is no appeal against 264 order there only writ petition you can file so so this judgment of supreme court in income tax law in context of 264 type proceedings dwarka nath versus i any house when i was comparing these are the sir this is the dilemma which every tax consultant or tax professional faces in advising his client whether to go for statutory remedy or whether to go for constitutional writ remedy and this question is becoming why i submitted in between ki that statutory remedy is of no effect and why constitutional remedy is becoming day by day more important in tax administration you all must be practicing in gst side also whoever you must have seen sir the flavor of litigation is tax litigation is like this now if somebody makes a statistic 90% of tax litigation area is occupied by rates i want to just give an illustration or practical illustration if you go to any high court any high court in the country unka there is a cause list publish of daily of high court there is a tax bench 
if you go to the cost list of tax bench of writ petition, you will find enormous tax petitions being filed, Panaraji, in tax roster, tax quorum. What it conveys? Not India, not the Madras, everywhere in, in India. Because that, because of the simple reason that almost all of the tax adjudications which are made are somewhere or the other being even not following principle of natural justice. I am told I don't practice in GST. I don't, I don't even I don't know income tax properly. You people call keep calling me, but I am being told by my brother in my office that brother GST law has people have given Patani Kitna notice on the IAB. And they must have come to your this place also, sir. And the quality of that notice is great, is worth appreciating. What a soup. I mean, this is this should become an ideal moral show cause. People should understand that this is the basic level of show cause notice. You don't have anything in the name of Shokos Donis, but notice you, you. You see, it is like that you start beating your head with the wall. You don't get what you have to reply. And this same situation with all due respect to income tax authorities, I find in 148 capital A clause B Shokos Notice, which is prior to reopening. You all know that 148 in income tax law, the reopening favorite provision of tax department, wherever they do not find anything, they use Unka remedy consa. Dear remedies, 140, favorite remedy. Nothing provision 140. And then what they do, sir, now they, they, they brought this great provision 148A. We all cherish ki sahab ye to, this is very great. 148 before reopening, you will give an opportunity to the taxpayer to ask him ki whether this is a fit case or. But what is the quality of show cause in that proceeding 148A? I'm just trying to show why this remedy election is becoming more important and why this writ filing is becoming more important and why this uh, why this harassment is increasing somewhere or the other that taxpayer has, is the, at the receiving side. If I am to give a show, I, I'm telling you, Pannaraji, I'm sitting in my, I'm standing in my family that my mother, own mother's case has been reopened, sir. Last year in March 2023. This is Kiran Goel. And now this her case was reopened on the reason first assessing officer thought in the new law it is reopened. Assessing officer thought that yes, Mr. Goel, your mother has done some financial transactions which are not captured in her ITR. So there is a probability that income has escaped. Assess. My younger brother Sandeep went to the checks uh, authority and the ITU concern and tried to besiege him and exhorted him to sir, please see that this is the ITR. These are the financial transactions which you have lifted from 26 AS and AAR. And this is the chart and table that they are being reflected in this place in the ITR. Everything already disclosed. Yes, this is the fine one. But what did you say to my brother that he says, Mr. Goel, see, we are helpless. Commissioner Saab is not agreeing. This is, this is who, see, Commissioner Saab is not agreeing. <laughs> Reopening is the baby of assessing officer or commissioner? First question. It is the satisfaction of the assessing officer that income has escaped assessment or is the satisfaction of the CIT that income has escaped assessment? I'm asking a basic question. CIT is a sanctioning authority, but it is not the primary, satis primary satisfaction is of the... And what is this, uh, what do you say, Spartan or Bankam? You are making, sorry, but you respect. Bankam means Bakwas. That CIT will decide my, my mother's case will be reopened or not. This means your satisfaction is being hijacked by the CIT, or I use the word legal phrase abdicated by to him. So ultimately, Panaraji, they reopened in order. They said, yes, everything is disclosed. But later on, when the assessment will take place, then you explain. Hey, Baba, why you are doing 148A? In the order while reopening the case of my mother, they said everything will be checked by the faceless officer, sir, the subsequent assessment. Now see the situation of, the, I, will, I will just give you a picture of subsequent assessment. This is one, how 148 is started now. We again submitted to the assessing officer, ki sahab, this initiation of proceedings under section 147 and 148 is fundamentally flawed for the simple reason and singular reason that no income has escaped assessment in hands of Mrs. Kiran Goel. But the assessing officer is now taking another stand. See the matrix now. The faceless officer, FAO, FAO, you please don't go by this acronym. Faceless assessing officer is shortly called as 
Wow, one is Jao, one is <laughs> this acronym came to us from this order. JAO is means judicial assessing officer, and FAO means faceless. It's a post lunch session. I have to keep you awake. Sorry. So FAO says in the case subsequent post reopening proceeding, ki, sir, once case being reopened, we can't do anything. Now what? Even if there is no income escaping assessment, it means the proceeding will go on. Does it mean so? Or to say in other words, that without being proper confirmation of this point, that you have rightly invoked section 147 and 148, just because 148 D order has been passed, does it mean that SSE is under uh, compulsion now to face the assessment and get everything checked by you and you can issue any blind questionnaire? Now what they are doing in the post assess reopening proceedings, sir, we are being given questionnaires like anything. Everything is being asked. There is a second problem now. He going beyond the subject matter of 148, everything is being asked from the taxpayer. As if 148 is equal to normal scrutiny. I don't know how you treat it. And when we start again suggesting him in a manner of humble sense, ki, sir, you have a limited scope of proceedings under 148. Please be restricted to the subject matter of reopening. They say, no, once case reopened, once 148 is done, once 148 notice given, then everything is open. Is this understanding correct? And now my question comes of remedy. Sorry, to complete this chain, when final assessment takes place, sir, kindly note the shape of final assessment. In final assessment, to just justify their stand of wrong stand of uh, this arbitrary reopening, they make some addition Uttamji of this uh, financial transaction mechanically and that too under section 68 to invoking 115 BB. And that too on the transactions which are already I don't know. I get seriously disturbed sir. Sorry. I should not. May Lord Venkata sir bless us. May I say Banke Bihari and Lord Banke Bihari is equal to Lord Venkatesh. I keep taking name of Banke Bihari in my seminars or my cases because I need a lot of blessings or uh, ashirwad of God to fight this kind of, uh, to come out of this kind of situations. So, remedy. I I may go in writ against 148 AD order, you can note down. I may also go in writ during the course of assessment proceedings to get the mandamas, that assessing officer be, be in the bounds of their authority. And I can also go to the rate after the assessment on given grounds of violation of natural justice and judicial judicial uh, violations. But there is a problem in the writ remedy, sir. One, I will not go to give my lecture on Article Two Twenty Six as such, but just confining my topic to the today's discussion that if tax matters, income tax cases, Article Two Twenty Six has to be invoked, then what are the good grounds which we can uh, persuade to the High Court judge to interfere in the it matters. What one thing I have learned from last 5-10 years of my practice, active practice in High Court, sir, and I will say it at the outset, so that all of you are with me, that writ remedy is also a discretionary remedy and it differs from judge to you say, ha, ha. then Mr. Goel, it's a very difficult remedy. Then it means in the same high court, one judge can say that it is a matter which can be interpreted and another judge can say it is not. It is, it happens, sir. It is a reality, sir. Because Article 226 is worded like this from the time constitution has been framed that it gives a discretionary power to the high court. And discretionary power means that it is a prerogative of the judge concerned who is hearing your writ petition whether to invoke, whether to admit your writ petition or not then you will say that that everything is subject it is sub, everything is very subjective to a large extent yes i was being told by one senior lawyer in supreme court that mr goel when we were discussing this on uh, tea time that how how we balance out that in which cases we can go to it and in which cases we can't so he said me one thing goel he look goel that there are itna cases in favor of assessee and there are itna cases Against. Against in the sense where courts have declined to interfere. Courts have said go to statutory alternate remedy. 
So I was reading one great scholar and I don't know whether he uh, will have, he's written a very large number of good books in the law side and worth reading. V. Sudesh Pai. He has written some very good books. Sir. I was reading his one book, V. Sudesh Pai, Working of the Indian Constitution. And in that one thing, sir, constitution, the chapter is there that writ remedy, what is the status of writ remedy today in Indian context? His good self, Mr. V. Sudesh Pai, has headed the National Academy, Judicial Academy also since Biodata. So he said, sir, that courts, high courts, probably he has given his viewpoint that high courts in Article 226 should not, uh, what you say, uh, shy away from admitting the more number of rates just on the point that alternate remedy is there because there is a very serious purpose behind Article 226 in the Indian Constitution. Because a, a person who cannot get justice from anywhere and he goes to high court, then his hope should not get dashed because and you, you cannot throw him again to alternate remedy. So, although it is discretionary, but there are four points you can note down where you can test your case directly under Article 226 and it is the broad summary of all the judgments. Sir. I will give you two, three judgments, but broad summary of all the judgments of the Supreme Court is this, that rate remedy can be invoked at least in these three, four areas. Where there is violation of principle of natural justice. What is so great in the violation of principle of natural justice, I ask you. That why courts have evolved this this test as an exceptional test that person will not be thrown to alternate remedy, but it will be maintainable if there is a violation of what is that serious? Tell me. I just asked sir and writer, what is that serious? Because natural justice is is a principle which every authority has to follow. And that there can be no compromise. It is inalienable. It is inviolable. So, if a given case, you are not given an effective hearing, virtual hearing, video conference hearing in the tax assessment under 144B, that is faceless assessment, then this is a fit case to invoke Article 226. Justice Krishna Ramaswamy in one of the cases of Madras High Court in Jamini Circuits, it's a worth reading order, Jamini Circuits, Honorable Madras High Court, the single judge order, there his lordship has said that if you have to give a a proper hearing or a personal hearing or video conference hearing, it cannot be a it, formality hearing. It has to be a meaningful hearing. I don't know what is your experience in the faceless assessments when you join virtual hearings. Are you given proper hearing? Sorry? They are not giving it all? That is one case. Hmm. I will not go to Hindi versus English, sir. Sorry. I will submit it as a brother, younger brother of yours. I will say that, see, ultimately, what is the meaning of the word hearing? No, 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 no. Sorry? It should be listening. Something else? This is very understanding. See, in Income Tax Act, you may note, there is a section where this word hearing is defined. And if you say me, Mr. Goel, just if, you have a, if I read this definition of hearing, section 2, clause 23, capital C. See how it is defined. Hearing includes communication of data and documents through electronic mode. It ends. <laughs> but what do you understand from this, sir? Hearing, I repeat, hearing includes communication of data and documents through. So, what, what, what? So, somebody said, department that the income tax law, this definition does not include oral hearing at all. So, it means hearing means only representation by replies. I'm asking a very serious question, sir. Maybe I'm in little, saying in lighter side, in a lighter sense, but this is a serious question. That does this definition of hearing only confines itself to written representation or it also includes oral uh, demeanor and oral representation also? It includes oral also, sir. Madras High Court also, Justice Anita Sumad, ma'am, has written a lot many orders. That is, there was a one classical case, sir, I found she, her ladyship has written in a very interesting order. Ki that where a person, Panna Raji, what he did, sir, he, he requested for oral hearing in his replies but forgot to click on that button which is there on the portal where you have to press some kind of a button to insist on oral hearing. 
इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट टू रिफ्यूज टू डिनाय ओरल हियरिंग पॉइंट के साहब इन्होंने दे डू नॉट बट प्रेस द राइट बटन सो हु जस्टिस मस्ट नॉट ओनली बी डन बट मस्ट बी इज दिस रॉन्गली टॉक टू अस इन द स्कूल एंड कॉलेजेस एंड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन रॉन्गली से सो एंड इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट इज इम्यून एंड टेकिंग शेल्टर एंड दिटर सी वट इज द प्रॉब्लम हेयर the taxpayer uh, for a moment i forget kapil goel is a practicing lawyer then i will be able to say this otherwise i will not see the plight of the situation sir the taxpayer is made to come to a lawyer give him dakshina and fees and that lawyer then files the writ and convinces the judge saab ki please give justice and see that they have violated principle of and then what happens case is remanded back to the person who has done sir this is, looks to me sometime very ludicrous and jocular to say the least that a person who has done wrong is being given advantage of his one thing which we have been taught sir in the schools and colleges and even supreme court has followed it many times that no person can be given advantage of his On wrong, but this denial of oral hearing, going to read petition, read petition, interfering judge, and then remanding back—is it okay? See, that's why some people say, "Mr. Mr. Goel, you are a practicing lawyer. Don't forget it. You get business and profession. Your your money fees comes from where? You should thank the income tax department to give you such litigation. That aspect I am not going into. I am just submitting my uh, what you say immature sentiments. You can say. that is is the litigation worth for that i go to high court sir i convince and persuade the lordship ki that there is violation of natural justice because they have not given me basic minimum right of oral and that to on the ground of ki that i have not pressed the right shri ram so this is one side of litigation that to get the oral, and you know in gst also i was reading some judgments from ji where the our high court sir judges great judges have returned to tax authorities ki please what they say in one of the case i remember you can note this is a delhi high court latest order headed by a judge which is chartered accountant bibu bakru sir the name of the case is jupiter exports versus commissioner central general taxes gst jupiter exports this is a delhi high court order on aspect of oral hearing quality what the tax department said to deny oral hearing sir and worth noting they said ki sab uh, what uh, judge asked them why you don't give them oral hearing they say sir since their person has visited once and filed replies etc and since we have uh, exchanged emails then there is sufficient compliance to i repeat since their one representative has visited and filed the reply and since we have exchanged emails then that is good enough for just said that is it the purport of hearing which you well this is equal to oral hearing email exchange and visit by representative is good enough they casting they pass rapidly well they pass some strictures also and you seen 148a please bear with me 148 capital a drill that is pre reopening are they giving us oral hearing in your in your this particular chennai place another before reopening when you are given 148a show cause let me simplify my point if 148a show cause comes to us and we apart from filing our replies under 148 capital a clause c if we request for oral hearing at 148a stage whether that oral hearing is given to you sorry kya baat hai sir not only oral written reply sir let me you are my senior i will should say not only or uh, or uh, this written reply they want satisfaction also don't ask me what is the definition of satisfaction shri radhe shri ram baki bihari lal ki jawai se sir see these things puzzles us so 148 i will i will interestingly submit to you one thing sir please note there is a cbdt guideline of july 2022 cbdt is the apex board under 116 the supreme tax authority is cbdt now you see the situation of here that a guideline comes in july 2022 of 148 there is a format sir which are prescribed by cbdt that how sanctioning authority while giving approval will sanction there is a column in that guideline 
कि दैट वेदर पर्सनल हियरिंग इज आस्क फॉर एंड वेदर इट इज बीइंग गिवन और नॉट तो समबडी आस्क द डिपार्टमेंट कि सर इफ यू फील एट 148 ए स्टेज देयर इज नो ओरल हियरिंग रिक्वायरमेंट व्हाई इन द सीबीडीटी गाइडलाइंस देयर इज अ देयर इज अ पर्टिकुलर कॉलम इन द सैंक्शन परफॉर्मा एम आई एबल टू मेक माय पॉइंट देयर इज अ सैंक्शन परफॉर्मा प्रिस्क्राइब्ड अंडर 151 इन 148 ए बाय सीबीडीटी नन अदर देन सीबीडीटी इन दैट देयर इज अ कॉलम वेदर वर्चुअल पर्सनल हियरिंग हैज बीन गिवन और so what is that for so taking serious note of it in bombay one of the cases the judge of bombay high court tax bench has said ki that if we find any case where you have not given even though there is no need they say you you offer oral hearing because your own column your own guidelines say that virtual hearing has to be coming to now point of how much time if you say that ki i have to join tomorrow or within one hour is it good is it okay there also a madras high court specially has said that seven days minimum gap has to be followed and there is a cbdt sop for the same there is nothing in the air there is a cbdt sop again saying in the faceless assessment if oral hearing is being to provided then their minimum time gap between the two dates should, should be seven days so sir i am not going abhi i am not going too far i am just submitting the writ petition invoking writ petition without going to alternate statutory remedy we can find out the areas within principle of natural no show cause notice given vague show cause notice given relied upon material acha no point i want to take second point of natural justice violation which is very important is ki in how many cases in income tax or otherwise you find that the tax authority is being fair to the assessee in that fair fair means that all relied upon material is being how many how much relied material are they provide sir they provide you something hey sir nothing means zero i take another situation what they do is they they say tax payer in chennai is let us say ki that you have done a transaction with mr hex mr hex has given a statement to income tax investigation wing investigation wing you all know is a super department that singam kind department so they take when they take statements they take not statements they take confessions i see sorry sir confessions generally are made before god but no no i don't know how these confessions are made to tax authorities so taking a statement from a particular person and uh, applying it across board to all the people to whom that person has done transaction ki they those all transactions are sham and bogus then then comes principle of natural justice or the ultram parta that please give me the copy of the statement of that person in the name of giving of that person statement sir what the tax department is doing across country they are providing us simply extract of the state yes yes one of such cases went to honorable lordship of madras high court justice anita suman ma'am and there this issue was raised and mr datar arvin datar sahab was also assisting in that case to lady shape and madras high court that is this kind of selective providing of material on part of income tax department is in compliance to principle of transparency and fairness yes or no no now see the other side department says we felt this much is sufficient i ask a question to all of you and myself ki who knows in the other part of the statement something better is written for me and you expect that tax payer will be able to respond to you because you have you have selectively decided ki itna material dena hai aur itna what is you are doing are you selectively picking and choose the material to be supplied or and not supplied so the principle of law is this sir which we must understand and which for which writ petition can be invoked and this is a very serious issue which i am submitting sir sharing of material in this kind of piecemeal manner selective manner is totally wrong i don't know maybe some of you must knowing this is i am again becoming a fan of this great judge of madras high court justice krishna ramasamy he has written two latest orders sir in november and december panaraj ji where his lordship justice ramasamy has said and in those cases where which are treated with bad 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 sensor penny stock you know penny stock what is that is it defined 
how you say is a sale of shares is comes under penny stock and some does not come some some criteria is there to define penny stock is it senior chartered accountant asked me in a seminar of our c institute mr goel what is the definition and judicial and legal and authoritative definition of the word sorry that is i, I don't know if you pirate something to share it to me but and courts have also this is only on sir only on the self perceptions how you are able to earn astronomical gain in the share of a particular company which has no financials corresponding financial this is a perception based situation and he was i was saying madras high court apart from saying that full material must be confronted full statement must be given has also impressed in latest orders you must all note that opportunity of total proper cross examination will be provided sir in in large number of cases we see in income tax side sir there is no there is no what do you say parampara and procedure of cross when they don't give statement how will they provide cross examination but i am telling you with all due humility that cross examination of the witness of revenue is a thing which is again inviolable supposedly income tax department has only one statement of a uh, statement in the name of the material but i am happy to have this point from your side sir it is not only the right of the tax payer but it is their duty bound and duty and why i submit so and why justice rama sami krishnan rama sami has said it and i why I, if i give you my logical answer or sorry statutory answer you see in income tax law sir before making my assessment you will comply with natural justice it is not like this the job which ao has to do that first appellate authority will do can you say ki mr goel principle of natural justice which is being violated by the ao that can be remedied by the cit appeal in the first appeal i am this is the point which will give us this confirmation ki yes natural justice proper confrontation of relied upon material proper cross examination has to be done before conclusion of assessment i was finding sir one case before justice sivangnanam saab our favorite judge from madras and chennai is justice sivangnanam last week panaraji i fought this case although i was nervous that i don't know uh, as a lawyer sometimes you feel that you will be able to persuade my lord in article 226 that was the assessment of a calcutta based company which was assessed for some cash payment alleged unaccounted cash payment under 69 capital c and the beauty of the well, the important aspect which was there sir in that case that when they gave us show cause notice in march 2023 they gave us simple extract of statement of mr x and mr y but when they made the assessment they introduced the third guest entry now mr z an entire assessment goes on statement of mr z of which no clue was given to the tax payer before the time assessment order was of mr x and y assessi ko jab assessi was given the extract assessi said please give me complete statement and cross examination of these two fellows can you imagine what ao wrote in the assessment order to deny cross examination sir he and I, and i read it to justice uh, sivangnanam and justice sivangnanam has passed six page order last day in damodar ispat you can note the name of this case damodar ispat private limited the reason given by the ao in the assessment order which high court interfered was that ki if we give cross examination of our witness it will breach confidential confidential justice sivangnanam said to department counsel ki sahab if you have used this statement against them do you see that it confidentiality remains once you have utilized any material against the tax payer not only it has to be confronted but it has to be cross examined so i believe if i go by madras high court views also and our calcutta high court this judgment and other judgments of supreme court in and one more thing before i uh, wind up this cross examination part all of you make a note this supreme court latest order sir this is a very landmark order i believe of 2023 late and long after supreme court after andaman timber industries speaking through justice bb nagarathna and justice ujjal bhuen in case of this jindal steel and power limited and reliance industries limited two name of cases jindal steel and power limited and reliance industries limited 460 itr the latest itr 460 itr page number 162 the lordships of supreme court of india 460 itr page 162 justice nagarathna and justice ujjal bhuen they say sir this was a case of and panaraji this is a very interesting case why i say you sir why it is interesting case generally 
we as a layman or a common man understand that these big companies do not do tax evasion or some kind of this person will not be charged with accommodation entry taking. When I read this general steel limited when it was pronounced, I find that one case was of Reliance Industries, and I say in academic sense, no, nothing more, because nowadays you don't know in the new criminal law you given some notice why you are speaking about us. But this case law says Reliance Industries Limited, sir. The allegation was against Reliance Industries was that they have taken some bogus entry in the form of professional expenditure which they have claimed in their books. And that allegation of department was based on this point that they, there is one gentleman called Mr. S. K. Gupta who has given this statement that this uh, amount of expenditure which Reliance Industries has paid is in the is is a, is a form of entry. Department disallowed this kharcha in the hands of Reliance Industries Limited expenditure. And definitely Reliance Industries fought ki that this gentleman has is not cross-examined to us and his statement is not being corroborated by independent material and he has even retracted later on. Now, Supreme Court in 2023, to cut the long story short, has upheld tribunal and high court favorable orders saying that yes, unless a particular statement which income tax department is using is tested on the principle of cross-examination, it has no evidentiary value. 460 ITR 162, this is a very important order. So cross-examination is must. Anyhow, as I was talking about writ remedy, one area is natural justice violation. Second important area, sir, which we all must note is jurisdictional violation. Assumption of jurisdiction, jurisdictional point, jurisdictional issue. All very, very seniors are sitting here. Many of you must be aware, sir, that whenever any, whenever any particular authority issues us any notice or frames any particular assessment, there has to be valid assumption of what what do you mean by what jurisdiction? Sorry, very good. Have a clap for him, sir. It's a very absolutely right definition. Authority to enter into the area that particular uh, issue uh, assesses case. Authority to enter is known as is simplified jurisdiction. Now, when we see income tax department working, I see a very typical trend, Pannaraji, to make a, it more simple and uh, what you say uh, understandable. My point. Supposingly, in pen database, an address of a company or a jurisdiction is pen database says address is, let us say, Kolkata, and its otherwise territorial jurisdiction is in Chennai. Which officer will have jurisdiction to issue you the notice? And the pen database person or the person where your territorial jurisdiction is there? I'm saying a very serious point. I don't know. In country, across country, department has mixed everything. Pen database and Jurisdiction both are mixed. In some cases, they are going by pen database, and in some cases, they are going by. Sir, dono to say nahi ho sakta hai, sir. Yeah, is, is it choice to the department? Income Tax Act confers choice on the income tax authority to pick the jurisdiction at their whims and fancies. That some cases they go by pen database, the so called pen database in inverted lines, inverted, inverted things, and other is uh, jurisdiction of territorial. Now, I was reading one case, which is Rajasthan High Court latest order of 2024. The name of the case is LMJ Services Limited. It is 8 January 2024 order of Rajasthan High Court, Jaipur Bench Justice Bansali. LMJ Services Limited versus Principal Commission of Income Tax, 8 January 2024, a very important order, saying that just because of pan database of a company which otherwise falls in the jurisdiction of Calcutta, Jaipur assessing officer cannot assume jurisdiction. And he has interfered and quashed the division bench of Rajasthan High Court headed by Justice Bansali. Now, the underlying ratio and the principle emerging from this precedent is this, sir, that department cannot assume jurisdiction mechanically on the basis of pen database. And why, why, please note one section also of Income Tax Act, section 120, if you can note. I don't know why it happens, Panaraji. I always say that these galtis and these mistakes happening happens due to give business to, uh, work to lawyers like Kapil Goel. We get a lot of litigation like that, sir. But section says what? 120 section says jurisdiction. I, be, I don't know. Uttamji once raised me this point in some seminar of faceless. If I'm not wrong, my memory failing me, if I am pardoned. 120. You pose me some question on that. 120 says, sir, how? what are the criteria which can be of jurisdiction? Is the section 120, when it says various criteria, if I spell out to the learned audience, it nowhere has pen database in it, sir. 
the beauty is this what it has it has territorial area you can know territorial area person or class of persons third income or class of income and fourth class or classes of cases where is this pen database am i able to make the sense so this is the underlying thing which i wanted to submit ki that assumption of jurisdiction has to be properly checked ki whether the person who is and you and you will have to object at the right time 124 subsection 3 you must also note section 124 subsection 3 says within 30 days of the issue of that notice by the wrong incompetent incorrect authority i have to say that you are wrong number right number is somebody wrong number versus that has to be done under section 124 subsection within 30 days right you are saying uttam bhai you are saying that mr goel it is inherent lack of jurisdiction the word used is inherent see it um you are right i agree with you sir but still sir you will appreciate you know i saw one order written in case of this adarsh developers you may note it this is a latest order of karnataka high court by justice dm sham prashad and mr venkat raman from department side appears that asg and there the issue was this ki sir in faceless assessments which are happening now who is the competent authority to issue 143 subsection 2 is it the national faceless assessment center anybody can issue or it is the particular prescribed authority can issue to so that case went against the sc 70 80 page order the single judge has written only on this point of 124 subsection 3 but you are right i i met i met uh, join mr uttam ji on this point sir by saying madras high court division bench in one of the leading order you can note the name charu bagadia this is the order authored by justice mahadevan r mahadevan it's a division bench order single judge was against and 148 was to be issued by a particular right officer it was not issued sir proceedings were started by wrong officer later on in between the proceedings were swan transferred to madras high court interfering in writ petition writ appeal not writ petition single judge was against the sir but madras high court intra court appeal r mahadevan sahab in charu bagadia it's a reported decision in 442 itr somewhere charu bagadia said that if there is lack of jurisdiction consent cannot confer jurisdiction and proceedings have to be rather he has applied one supreme court decision in another law ki that if a proceeding are without jurisdiction then it is the duty of the writ court to interfere and that is madras high court charu bagadia and there is one more decision if you want to understand the concept of jurisdiction by by the same judge justice mahadevan in the case of virtusa consulting it's a worth reading order i am telling you sir virtusa consulting what an order justice mahadevan has written that if there is incorrect assumption of jurisdiction and if there is a writ petition filed what should be the approach of the writ court in the areas where there is wrong assumption of jurisdiction that is virtusa consulting it's also reported in itr authored by justice mahadevan so the he has said in this order of uh, virtusa consulting uttam ji that he has said ki that if there is lack of jurisdiction then the objection can be raised at, at any stage department was complaining ki sahab he did not objected at the first stage it is complaining to you so he has missed the bus the lordships of madras high court says that consent can, the this particular uh, what do you say violation of statutory provision cannot be waived and it can be raised at any stage so so at least mahadevan sahab's judgments are very good on this point as far as assumption of jurisdiction and madras high court is positive madam see this 30 days you are right see i am happy that you joined me on this issue see it's a dilemma like that if some judges believe dear that this 30 days is directory let me give you a point to answer your learned query supposingly an assessing authority dear is making a notice in that notice the address of the notice let us say kapil goel is issued a notice and the address is written sector 7 rohini delhi but the person who is issuing me the notice i am individual is from chennai let us say here now the court says here 1243 will not apply because the, that notice itself which is being issued is is targeting my is writing my address as so there 30 days will not apply this was happening in that rajasthan high court lmj services i hope i am able to make some sense to your query but otherwise ideally 
many judges and many jurisdictional objections have gone due to 124.3 also. And some have not gone because there the lordships and judge have believed that this is inherent lack of jurisdiction as Saris was saying. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Right. But but at the end of the day, dear, you have to also see that if the see you got my classical case, there were there are cases like Rajasthan High Court. Has, I am also fighting some cases in our uh, High Courts where the notice itself is showing that the person who is issuing has no. So how can he say that? Aap bolenge, you will object. Then only you will get realization. Dear C, in the faceless assessment, if I'm rightly getting your point, the thing is this, that all cases are to be assessed 143.3 by faceless except international taxation and that uh, central charges. Am I right? So if you are in international tax, what has happened in a given case? I'm happy you raised this point. In an international tax case, Pandaraji, what happened? A 143.2 notice was given initially by faceless person. Unko ma'am... Bad my dear Unko realized Wa Kieto is non-resident, he's international tax person. He then they later on in between transferred the file to Gurgama International Tax Officer. The person who happened to complete my assessment was not faceless assessment unit, it was proper ITO of a Gurgama circle or ward. Now, question here comes: the person who is making my assessment that is in Gurgama ITO, whether he has given me 143 too. Yes or no? No. Can a person make an assessment without giving 143 to this is the next question. No, no, that is based on the concern financial year and assessment year, if I'm not wrong. That is AY and concern and financial year, dear. The here problem is this that if department is in between transferring the proceedings and the Concern who makes my assessment is not issuing me the right judicial notice. Are you getting my point? Whether this 143.2 notice is issued by that officer who is my correct AO. You can also note one definition of assessing officer. Section 2, clause 7, capital A in income tax law defines who is assessing officer. Section 2, clause 7, capital A. Anybody and everybody cannot be my AO, dear. It defines, the law defines what is assessing officer. Section 2, clause 7, capital A, sir. Just to make the things lighter, sir, I was fighting one case and I got this. I believe this one will be one of the different kind of order where charitable trust cases, the registrations are cancelled in those cases where search has happened. And it's a very important point I'm submitting. Various charitable trust registrations are cancelled by income tax department, which ought to have been cancelled by PCIT exemption. They are done by PCIT central. You, you will say ki how Mr. Goel PCIT Central has cancelled. PCIT Central has cancelled because there was one order passed under section 127 of centralization and due to search happening on that. So, so question comes ki when 127 order is passed, AO gets changed or even CIT authority to cancel registration also changes. And across India, Pannaraji, they have cancelled the registration in all the central cases by PCIT Central, which ought to have been done by PCIT. Exemption. You can note the name of this case, which has just been pronounced two days back. I am the arguing counsel in this case, but this is an interesting preposition worth watching how the court says, High Court says, Agarwal Vidya Charni Sabha, 8 January 2024, Delhi Bench of ITD by Mr. Bala Ganesh and by Mr. Anubhav Sharma. Agarwal Vidya Pracharni Sabha, Delhi Bench of ITD, the bench headed by Mr. Bala Ganesh and Mr. Anubhav Sharma. The point was this. Ki who is the competent correct authority to cancel the registration under new section 12 AB subsection 4? Is it PCIT central or is it PCIT? CBDD notification of 2014 says all works relating to registration and cancellation are vested with? Somebody can say on a on other side that it's a mere technical error. What has happened? What big has happened ki, that if somebody acts has to do this work is done by why? Somebody can say. Revenue Council generally say, ki, sir, kya hua? what has happened? Is it so? Is it that like that? 
no a work to be done by particular authority cannot be done by this is not today's principle this is the settled principle of administrative law sir a work to be done by one particular authority cannot be done by wade and forsit is the, is the legal world's best commentary on administrative law wade and forsit it says that learned author uk or british author is that a task given under a statute to a particular authority cannot be sub delegated and in favor of we have those cases in the income tax act where sanction under 151 has to be given by cit it is given by somebody else you must have in chennai also sir those cases where 151 sanction of this uh, 148 cases is to be given by let us say after 3 year reopening ccit concern but it is given by cit is it right sanction given by wrong authority can be upheld sir there has there has been thousands of cases in the country when 148 after this new law coming na you may please check in your note it down sanction has been taken from right and correct authority or not right correct authority means if after 3 year reopening is made it has to be from ccit and within 3 years it has to be and it's a judicial point correct sanction is a do you believe department says so come in some cases in which we are argue, which we have argued and one of our landmark cases you can note this few days back delhi high court has decided 200 148 notices have been quashed by the bench of justice rajiv shikdar the case fortunately i am happy that the lead case was represented by me with your blessings we have won this case where 200 148 notices have been quashed on 5th january 2024 lead case is twilight infrastructure private limited twilight twilight 200 and 200 more are lined up this is a second twilight batch but one twilight batch has gone dip in against department where 200 148 have been quashed on this point that sanction under 151 of income tax act is taken from the wrong and why that mistake has happened because they are not clear ki that it is within 3 years or it is beyond 3 years their calculation problem is there sir travel back they say it is within 3 years we case of assessment year 167 being reopened in 2022 it is after 3 years or within 3 years tell me sir by which calendar of which planet ay 1617 reopen in 2022 sir please tell me how it will be within what is this is this the eh, what is this but i am happy for that manner ki that kapil goel has won such a landmark case and i am being benefited economically also but is it a matter of smile for the other side or the serious side ki that income tax department is not serious enough to understand that who is the correct sanctioning authority which is so plain and then we have to understand what is remedy mr goel what is the remedy for this malady any also judicial point i was submitting one area of going to read petition is this natural justice second is jurisdictional violation third is violation of fundamental rights under part 3 of constitution of india violation of that is article 14 that is article 19 that is article 21 three main articles there are lot of fundamental rights but i am emphasizing three important articles for today's discussion article 14 article 19 and article 21 many people i was discussing to panna raji when he was inviting me for this conference that some day or some time we must discuss or dialogue that what are what are the important areas where tax laws have to be interpolated with constitution of india many people believe with due respect wrongly that constitution of india has no role in tax laws sorry sir tax constitution is mother mother document by which all laws are and why i am saying this statement article 14 please note it says that right to equality that states will shall be giving right to equality sir now let us say kapil goel case and panna raji sirc chairman case are on the same sorry panna raji taking your name then i will take name of satishan ji after some time to so, panna raji case and kapil goel case are on the same subject matter but he is a handsome man or a great man he is being favorably treated by the tax authority for the reasons which are not to be elaborated but kapil goel is not that dear i why say so i see in my practice sir hundreds of areas where this thing serious point is this that people are picked and choose there is a selective treatment 
Madras High Court in the case of Chidambaram Saab, Justice Sivagnanam, when 148 was being challenged, Justice Sivagnanam only, when some coffee growers were left and Mr. Chidambaram was selected and his case was reopened, Madras High Court interfered on the altar of Article Choda 14, saying that it is discriminatory. It is violative of equality. Many people believe that Article 14 should not be applied in tax laws because one person who is being not treated uh, in a particular manner does not give license to the others to be treated at par, parity. But if, let us assume this is right, Sir Uttamji, then what anarchy it will lead to? It means for a central law, which is a codified common law, country in different states, different treatment will be given. Will it be okay? And I'm saying with great responsibility in my today's discussion of remedies that there has been hundreds of areas where department has taken selective stand, uh, treatment, selective stand. In some cases, for example, CBDT instruction 1 oblique 2011, you note this instruction, this is very important. I'm telling you an area, CBDT instruction 1 oblique 2011, 31st January 2011, sir. Maybe must, some senior people must be aware about that CBDT instruction, sir, of 2011 where you will recall that this is an instruction which this says that if an income of a taxpayer in a metro city is exceeding 20 lakh rupees, the AO will be ACIT, DCIT, and if it is less than that amount of 20 lakh, and so it will be ITO. This instruction has not been taken back till date. It is still today active. What I am coming to is, this instruction says, depending upon the amount of the written income for the particular year, the, the AO will be ACIT, DCIT, or it will be IT. Now, see, in some parts of the country with some assesses, Panna Raji, they have followed this instruction. But in some cases, is it okay? Let me come to more serious issues. Although Supreme Court has stated it, but you must be loving to hear it. At least I had noted it. Document identification number. Who brought the concept? Sorry, sir, please don't take me otherwise. Who brought the concept of Dint government in 2019? The circular is the that epochal circular is circular number 14, circular number 19, oblique 2019, dated 14th August 2019. The concept of DIN quite every communication issued by tax authority will have a document number, document identification number generated and quoted. If not done, it will be deemed to have been ever. This is the reading of that circular, sir. Now, how it happens that in some cases this, this mechanism goes okay, but in some cases this does not go okay. And in the cases which does not go okay, department says, sir, 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 we mistake a bona fide, sir. Don't quash the assessment, sir, to quote. It is an irregularity. Pardon our mistake. But my mind, mind asks me, you all are very learned. Maybe you tell me that if your taxpayer files a return in which tax holiday deduction or loss carry forward is there in one day due to server problems, the return is filed late. Who suffers? Department is magnanimous with us. Department graciously treats you. Department says one day delay return, your deduction and loss, gone, gone. But here you don't follow your circular says it's a bona fide mistake, irregularity. Sorry, this is traverse city of justice in this country now. I don't know how to, how a taxpayer, that is why I say it's, 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 what is this? AO, who is a sir, very lower authority, says my circular of 119, which is binding under section 119. You know, all circulars issued by CBDT are binding under section 119. But what, why it happens that where assessee makes mistake, then it is, permanent error and fatal error but when a department makes mistake then sir 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 it's a bona fide mistake and then to which circular does not it uses the language no document can be issued without DIN and if done it will be deemed to have been ever do I need to cite authorities for this preposition that violation of circular issued by a CBDT is a fatal but there has been thousands of cases which department has not followed this mandate of circular 19, this 2019. Three high courts in the country, including Calcutta High Court Judgment, Tata Medical Trust, authored by Justice Sivangnanam Saab. Calcutta Medical Trust is one order authored by this Sivangnanam Saab, 4, 459 ITR, 169. Tata Medical Trust. That DIN violation is a fatal error. 
but the you will may, maybe somebody you have in mind that mr goel that delhi high court decision on din is being stayed by supreme court that brandix mauritius case delhi high court order 454 itr page 36 but i am telling you sir see if two see firstly madras high court is not against to my mind i am sitting in madras standing in madras jurisdiction so even if delhi high court one decision is being stayed by lordships of supreme court with all due respect calcutta high court decision of tata medical trust and bombay high court decision of ashok commercial enterprises 459 itr page number 100 you should note this decision also 459 itr 100 these two decisions are not yet stayed so for madras you can still say that these two non judicial high court decisions are binding in your jurisdiction see nobody can say with all due respect in, as far as my understanding goes that ao sitting in madras or some tribunal sitting in madras says that we will not follow bombay high court or calcutta high court because they are non judicial sorry even though if you say they are persuasive but they cannot be treated that a, a particular authority which is much, much lower in position to uh, high court can can choice to say that i will follow the higher wisdom so i am submitting with all due respons uh, responsibility sir this madras uh, this bombay high court decision and calcutta high court decision is binding and operative in your jurisdiction and still department cannot say ki the cases where you are challenging in appeals uh, violation of din circular is better sorry see sir traveling beyond the shoko's notice is like this that if you are to <laughs> test the validity of the proceedings i submit it like this then only thing which you will see is the show cause notice now if show cause notice is being varied whether any supplementary show cause notice is being given then matter ends there there have been umpteen number of decisions of supreme court and i could i will just illustrate it very simply 263 let us say cit revises an assessment and gives you one show cause but by the time he makes the revision order, his heart gets changed. Heart samaj sir. The reason gets changed. But there is no show cause notice on the point on which he passes the final order. Courts have been very strict. Bombay High Court, you can note the one of the latest order is Kalptaru Power Transmission Limited by Justice Zinendar Jain. Bombay High Court is a good order. Kalptaru Power Transmission Limited in a wet case, Maharashtra law case, state of Maharashtra where the judge has discussed all the Supreme Court decisions that going beyond and transgressing beyond Shoko's notice is an incurable error and it is fatal. Am I there, sir? So, so DIN point I was submitting, sir, in section 1 of 2011. Third, I will also say that this selective treatment, Pannaraji. See, when 148s have been done in the country in last three years in large number of cases, a Bortoni or Anasar? Sorry, I don't know jokes too much. I am a serious chartered content type person, sir. Sorry. You have to bear with me how much along. Yes, yes. Okay, no problem. So, I, let me complete this part of discussion. I was saying that selective treatment is not uh, allowable. For that, I was just submitting that there have been hundreds and thousands of cases being reopened, sir. What has happened, curiously? In some cases in the country, when 148 is being done and 148D order is given, Sanction of 151 is being enclosed with the order, 151 sanction in the performer. But in many cases in the country, revenue has authorities have not even supplied the sanction order concern of the PCIT and CCIT. Maybe, I don't know what is the position in Chennai when cases have been reopened and notices under 148 have been issued, whether you have been supplied the sanction. Even after asking, they are not giving. Now note it down. CBDT guidelines, which I just said some uh, some time earlier, July 2022, it says that in all 148 which are being done under the new law, sanction order will be enclosed with the notice. It is mandatory. It is not directory. I happen to argue, sir, one case before our this Delhi judge sahab, Sardar sahab. He sir, they have not given me sanction. So, Mr. Go the, the judge said, me, Mr. Goel, you have not got sanction. Okay. We asked department to give you, sir. I don't, this is not my argument. My argument is this. I corrected honorable judge to understand him, to, give, to make him understand my point. Ki, sir, my lord, my point is this, ki, that if they have not followed the severity guidelines, which mandates them to give me the copy of the sanction along with the notice, then entire proceedings are why? Luckily, I have got the stay of the entire proceedings and just sub has said, yes, Mr. Goel, you are right. And what is the logic behind of giving this circular along with the notice, Uttamji? 
no 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 not application of mind sir this anti dating exercise is sir today supposingly you do 148 and you don't you keep the sanction with your chest sorry like a surreptitious thing surreptitious you know na secret thing like it like it has to be always kept in ghungat and parda and all these things sorry i'm i'm saying all my words very carefully this sanction is to be kept always in uh, secrecy how will a taxpayer know ki valid sanction has been given by the valid authority with due application of mind if you will keep this sanction with your chest always and why this cbdt is saying in this circular and guidelines it means cbdt should not have said it why cbdt has stated in the paragraph specifically that sanction complete sanction will be provided to the taxpayer whenever 148 ad adverse order or any order is passed under 148 ad and notice under 148 ad my point was panaraj ji selective treatment i when i saw delhi cases uttam ji we have not been given any sanction but when i got some cases from allahabad high court jurisdiction and sir maharashtra jurisdiction i found sanction has been now my question to all of you what is this what is this logic or uh, reason for this selective treatment that the same authorities under the same statute in one part of the country are following one set of standards and the same authority under the same law for the different state is following i have given you three illustrations cbt instruction 1 oblique 2011 so you are not lost second is this din circular circular 19 oblique 2019 and third is this cbt guidelines dated july 2022 these are the three clear areas sir where we have found serious discrimination in the tax practice now somebody can't say as a, as i as i was remembering justice sivangnanam saab judgment in chidambaram cases where 148 was quashed on the simple reason that some coffee growers in the same subject matter like panna rajji was said okay he is fine but kapil goel is this is not article 14 so this is the area where writ petition can be you know uh, a case came to income tax of income tax department sir in same family you know sometimes co sellers and co buyers are there This is not. I'm saying this is very usual. People, there are co-sellers and there are, and this this case which I'm going to just state and I will take a pause here. After this, this is the name of that case, Harish Chand Bhati, where Revenue Secretary of the country was summoned by Lordships of Allahabad High Court. It's a reported order, Harish Chand Bhati versus Union of India by Allahabad High Court, where Revenue Secretary Mr. Bajaj Tarun Bajaj, when he was the Revenue Secretary, was called by Allahabad High Court on quality of faceless assessment and what anguished my lord. It's worth interestingly noting, Harish Chand Bhati was one of the co-seller of one immovable property, sir, in Noida, with another his brother and family member. Now both cases came under scrutiny and done by the faceless team. Wow, Bhagwan, Jane, sir, God knows. Now this faceless regime, you know, some case can go to Chennai, some can go to Kerala, some can go to Calcutta, some can go to Kashmir and everywhere. One family member of co-seller of with Harishan Bhati was given clean chit. Yes, you are selling agricultural land. It is rural land, no capital. Shri Ram. But Harishan Bhati was not that lucky. His case might have gone to some different assessment unit in the faceless ecosystem. He was treated too adversely and harshly. He he, he was said that you are selling a, a taxable land, and who will tax you? Impose tax on you. When this matter came in the court of any, one of the finest judge of our country, I, I have a lot of respect for him, Justice Surya Prakash Kesharwani Sahab, SP Kesharwani Justice. He said, Income Tax Department, forget about the rate. I want to ask from the income tax head-on people, ki, what is this your faceless assessment do? Ki, when the cases of co-sellers and co-buyers comes, are you allowed to take this kind of stance? And what is the check and balance in your system? This is my lord asked Revenue Secretary Tarun Bajaj Sahab. And there, due to the decision of Harish Chand Bharti versus Union of India, reported in 448 ITR somewhere, they have to introduce a circular to correct to make a correction mechanism and to convince my lords ki, to to cool down my lords. Sir, please, this is an error which has happened. We will see that future it does not happen. But they gave a serious SOP to the income tax department. That, sir, you make your house in order. Uh, this faceless system. that if two family this kind of co sellers and co buyers cases come this kind of differential treatments does not i am being told sir today also this practice is being going on people are taking different standards in co sellers and co 
sir you are taking me why you are uh, making me that kind of a situation you know my nature if you give me this kind of cases uh, situations more i will get troubled you say mr goel same as his case the pre department's year wise treatment goes sir this is not the law this is something else i have to say it like this why radha swami sasang 193 itr 321 Why Parshuram Portries one zero six ITR page one? Why Excel Industries three fifty eight ITR two ninety five? Why Godrej Bai Justice Ranjan Gogoi three ninety four ITR four forty nine? The Supreme Court says that every law has to be consistent and uniform. Tax administration has to be consistent and uniform in its approach. <laughs> It is the basic minimum thing, sir. but we have to fight in the courts for getting this basic right to be appreciated that you have to be consistent and uniform for that mr panna raj has called kapil goel to speak on remedies to be to search for this is irony sir sorry panna raj ji somebody was asking me sir just i take a pause that why mr goel in another conference in calcutta or somewhere i was speaking on this remedies so somebody asked me senior chartered accountant sir hey, mr goel why you took this choose this topic this is not we generally see seminars this topic of remedies i say sir ki because i as a chartered accountant or a tax practitioner feel that it's very difficult at times to elect the right remedy we will continue after a short break 10 minutes break sir thank you Members are requested to settle down quickly so as we can start the session. Please settle down quickly. Hmm. All of you have got the paper of which I authored this remedies. I don't know you will. Not got, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I should ask Panaraji. Sorry, I circulated. You must get it. Anyhow, this is a nineteen-pager paper I written to how to compare the remedies and elect it. <clears throat> Can we start, sir? Yes, sir. Hmm. Can you repeat, sir, what you said? right other party is who department or private party okay no 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 sir see you have to ask the judge for protection as an entry order you are asking me technical question i am humbly answering it if during the course of proceedings anybody wants to hijack the subjudice matter or interfere in the administration of justice then courts have power to grant interim relief also and give directions to the police also to give you suitable protection where it comes from see i will give you illustration sir i was being asked chairman sir that how much is the time i have to speak for more okay no 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 i don't know sorry sorry joining back your point sir see it goes like this ki if you go in writ petition sir and this is very important area of jurisprudence and most lucrative area of writ filing which you ask otherwise see if you file a tax writ sir against any assessment or any adjudication generally writs are not decided in one hearing first is admission then other party is given the chance to file counter you know writ petition goes how you file a writ petition with an affidavit if high court finds it's worthy then they pass a issue notice stage then in that issue notice stage the most important and critical thing is the interim relief interim relief or i say in uh, more simple sense that writs are filed majority in a sense for interim relief you, my my friends who go to high court they understand 
that if you are uh, to get the quick relief that is the reason how interim relief courts give sometime court says that ultimately impugn proceedings are stayed the interim relief also there is no set formula it also depends upon case to case situation to situation and judge to and one more thing on letter side counsel to counsel sorry sir party to party it also sir there is a you so you know sir why i said this somewhere we read you show me the face i will show you the law this is written somewhere and your interim relief is very important area article 226 when you file writ petition so people say your prayer for interim relief should be clear categorical if you are not able to get the proper interim relief might be your writ petition becomes infructuous that's the point any also so we discussed lot of things where i left my point was that election of remedy writ versus statutory remedy we were saying what are the good areas or carved out areas where even though statutory remedy is there writ remedy can be used there are the three points i flagged one is natural justice violation second is jurisdictional violation and fundamental rights fourth one is constitutional validity constitutional validity means if you are to challenge the validity of a particular provision or circular notification then that is also an area where you can directly approach the high court under article 226 so so and you know in income tax law sir lot of provisions are made where constitutional validity has to be tested yet to be tested like 115 bb i don't know how this kind of section can even sustain sir like anything see sir the idea is this if i am kapil goel i took loan from this gentleman our good friend mr panna raj he gives me loan because he is is obliged by this fact that mr goel comes to see institute and give seminars i am in need of money i ask him ki baba de do paisa i don't he gives me graciously without interest to be repaid at choice tax department ask me mr goel who is this panna raj you are in delhi he is in there why he has given loan to you where is the agreement what is his friendly loan what is the source of mr panna raj have you asked panna raj before give, taking money that from where mr panna raj has got it i am as a borrower perplex can i ask lender while giving money to me that where from the lender has got it what is the great lender of this country what is this relationship who dominates whom lender dominates borrower or borrower dominates lender and you i am not wasting your time this other audience you know section 68 proviso inserted by finance act 2022 which now legalizes this burden i don't know how this burden will be discharged in a normal lending supposingly a corporate is there ma'am and he is taking an institutional loan board can that borrower poor borrower or a small level borrower ask institutional lender to explain the source from where he brought his money in my assessment and if it is not done who will suffer the addition under 68 red with 115 moment 68 is attracted 115 bb comes like shadow maybe somebody has to take it head on sir ki what is the limit of this new kind of onus extraordinary burden of source of source this is very typical and it is already effective from 1st april 2022 financial year 22 23 and ay 23 24 whenever we will get the scrutiny notices for sir for this ay 23 24 times to come sir yes there are merit of situations now you know i don't know matlab with due respect to justice anita suman ma'am he has she has written one order it is not i don't know public domain come out this is a 60 70 page order where in the departments intra court appeal there was a issue of this validity of this section na tds on cash withdrawal 194 n she has upheld the validity taking the point that even if some tds is directly what is the problem credit will be given you can take the credit in the return and get the refund i'm i'm with you let me sir you are absolutely right where see what is the problem with due respect to you read that order it's just came it's few days back It's not very old. 
the news is this ki that the ladyship and the madras high court division bench has taken a very tough stand on 194 and against the sesi taking this that it is a, in the uh, legislature wisdom to make any kind of tds provision which i have a different sentiment how i say let us say ki something is absolutely not chargeable under the substantive provisions can there be tax collection dehors my main chargeability yes that's the key point that's the key point sir and what you are asking ki mr goel if let us say if i withdraw my money and give it to my son education in foreign country how tc how 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 there are two people how where is the taxability and you say ki this all these provisions are different islands chapter 17 b which is tcs and tds chapter under the income tax act is it in continuation to taxability or it is independent of taxability meaning thereby if there is no primary liability to pay tax can there be secondary liability to withhold i don't know sir see why this becomes much more practically difficult you will all appreciate supposingly on the wrong income tax get deducted and then you have to file the return then it gets scrutinized then you get that kundli milan and some reconciliation you know kundli milan some wrong tds is done you are filing return you have to meet because how you will get refund and then the officer concerned will ask you to explain and reconcile in the accountant sense reconciliation ki why the person has deducted it and why there is no income in your hands and why you are seeking many lucky people will be like panna raji who will sell through and who will be given the refund sorry sir but i will we will not get sir this is the litigation again see due to wrong tds at the first stage there are cascading problems which emanates out of it return filing compliance scrutiny explanation faceless assessment then unnecessary additions and appeals and all those blah 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 so ab now you now you ask for a remedy you say as a department sir puchhenge you will ask department department say come and under 197 tell me your experience in 197 sir r197 given graciously is department accepts that ki this payment can be received without tds very easily easily is to be quoted who gives 197 Uh, oh, and today systems decide 197 no human application of mind justice krishna here one of the country's greatest judges in one of the case ratlam municipality corporation says any statutory provision without human application of mind is zero we had towards technology era but are we also having humanitarian sense in that adjudication i am not uttam ji that educated sorry i am a little man see i say in a very simple sense if there is no taxability at all for what tds will do for what is tds enforcement mechanism information collection mechanism surveillance mechanism what is tds understand the nature of tds proceedings sir hmm. sir i bow down to you sir sir i am so humble well i'm happy that you picked my information collection my point and i i said it for purpose and you rightly caught it see now there has to be balance between the cause and effect you know if you what is the what is the end point you want to reach the government collection of mechanism and for for which there is annual information statement pata nahi sir how many provisions in the income tax act are there which are being enforced where people make statement of financial transaction filing so many things you file we file and in that all these informations are readily captured now due to their inefficiency to read it and fathom it you make another burden on the director ki that you comply for it so that we have in the 26 years and all this sir this is not done sir tds has not that purpose see section 190 is a tds starting section sir what is 190 saying 191 these are two important section i am humbly submitting to you they say that this is secondary one of the mode of collection of tax in advance on the income which will be generated in the hands of the this is the basic adafis with now you can't either you change it government has powers government could have legislature parliament in its wisdom could have changed 190 and 191 but today also section 190 and 191 and happy you joined me on this issue it is not information collection uh, what do you say the trigger point for which there you have a different provisions in the law this is 300 section textbook sir there are section where information collection you know aar aas what not 
EIS is an animal information statement. What is that? Everything is kept at on 360 degree. But problem here is, with due respect to revenue authorities, they are not able to do their job to read that statement properly. They miss it. They don't read it properly, whatever. Now they want to put everything on the head of for administrative convenience. The right word is administrative. This is not done, sir. For me, like person, I will not. Sorry. Let's see. Hey, I am coming back to my important issue, sir. If I have to take low T nil TDS certificate or low will holding 197, and I am able to show my case that yes, I deserve it. Even then, I am not given it, and I, even then, I have to go to writ petition because 197 rejection, you don't have any such appeal. Supposing you file 197, why you trust it, sir. I want to press it. If 197 is applied and it is being rejected as expected, then what remedy you will have? Can you file 264? Yes, noted. 264 is a provision which courts have said, even Dr. Chandra Chud sir, when he was in Bombay High Court, he has written some orders, Justice Chandra Chud, who is now Chief Justice of our country. He has said in Bombay High Court in some decisions that 197 rejection is an order. It's not a certificate. It is called as certificate, but it is a order. So for against which you can also file 264 revision petition before with 500 rupees fees, statutory fees, not lawyer's fees. Go to Smalta. So 264 is one remedy and you can also traverse it under writ petition also. Why I am saying there is a case which I read, Bentley Nawada is a foreign company of Bom Delhi High Court. It is authored by Justice Murli Dhar Saab. Bentley Nawada was a case where 191 certificate was mechanically rejected. Delhi High Court interfered in writ petition saying that 197 requires again proper application of mine on the criteria stipulated in the rule framed under 197. Now you can't say Ki we want to just collect revenue if we, 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 we will not give 97 in any case. For, then what for 197 is there sir? If 197 has to be rejected in all the cases, for what it is there in the law book? That's why courts have to intervene and then also the point comes ki why not they introspect, why not they make course correction, why not they, I'm not, not a big son to, to give sermons, but I'm saying as a student of law, ki if the courts of the country are repeatedly saying ki that please be conscious in your responsibility when somebody comes to you in 197 and he is being assessed regularly and his refunds are there, he's in losses, why not you are giving? You yourself are making assessment on losses in 143.3. But you are not able to give? So then, then it's a serious problem of left hand do not know what right hand is doing. So 197 is a very important remedy to come out of the wrong. See, it's a cash flow issue also for big some companies which are operating on low margin. I don't know. I was reading somewhere. This section is also Herculean 194O somewhere. This is on purchase or sale. Some TDS has been brought. 194Q. Yes, yes, yes. Something like that. I don't understand, sir. I don't understand. I'm seriously not understand. But in, sir, it's okay. Sir, 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 please, sir. It's the starting, sir. This is the beginning of the road. You know, our 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 experience tells us that something which starts as the lower, it gradually. Shri Ram Jai. Chale. 119, CBDT, Mercy Petition. Hmm. See, what sir asked sir also is very important area of today's, I have kept it for discussion, that when you make some compliance, sir, please bear with me. When you make any, any particular compliance innocuously, belatedly, or you file, let us say, 10 IC form late. 10 IC, you all understand, 10 IC is a form for concessional rate of tax. And it is a current problem, 10B, etc., charitable trusts, or returns where loss are there, or carry forward losses to be there, or deduction under ATI, ATI, BATI. So there can be a genuine cases where the lawmaker, oh sorry, the particular taxpayer wanted from its side to comply, but for some genuine reasons, it could not uh, catch the flight or the train on time. It somehow caught, but with delay. And it made the compliance with delay. Now, department is saying that filing of 10 IC form or all these things in late manner is fatal, meaning thereby you will not be given benefit of concessional rate, meaning thereby you will not be given the benefit of exemption under section 1112. 
so this power which is given to the cbdt under 1961 act that is enactment of section 119 now what is that power the power is this that you can apply to cbdt which can condone and pardon this belated compliance courts judgments and our experience tells us again there is no uniformity in practice first thing second thing is this that is there is a this is a very important power if you are applying to 119 high court decision says you can note one bombay high court latest order and very landmark order rk madhani this is i have specially kept it for today sir rk madhani prakash engineering joint venture rk madhani prakash engineering joint venture versus union of india this is bombay high court rk madhani 458 itr page number 48 Bombay High Court 458 ITR page 48 R K Madani Joint Venture versus Union of India. Now in this case, sir, the board, great board CBDT rejected this 119 condonation petition. Bombay High Court in writ petition because you can't go in appeal in 119. Remedy is writ. Now the courts across country, Gujarat High Court, especially I read lot many decisions and this Bombay High Court, where they say if there is a genuine case. And there is a substantial compliance. You note this word theory of substantial compliance. So what is substantial compliance? Substantial compliance means that you have complied the law in substance. Maybe not in form in, as prescribed, but you have complied. You have filed that form. You have filed it voluntarily. You have filed it before the income tax department. 143 CPC asking you. So this case deserves CBDT condonation. Now question comes whether this has to be looked from a stricter approach or a liberal approach. Court says it has to be viewed with liberal. But the problem with sir here is this, the executive, sorry, with that great, our great administration has a different perception. This taxpayer has not followed this, we will not give this one. Let him go to high court, high court condone it, then we will. This means that they, they understand that this is a deserving case. But they say, who will not accept it? Let high court get it. What, what, do you, what do you take out of it? What do you take out of this? This is that, that they want somewhere litigation should get. Not in, you did not say con increase, you say continue. Good, right? Absolutely right. This is the point. But I am telling you, there is across country unanimity in high court decision, sir. 119 has to be liberally construed. You be you can note one doctrine. You be just EB, I have written in my in my paper one page on this. You be just EB remedium. You be just EB remedium means where there is a right, there is a remedy. You be just EB remedium. Where there is a right, there is a this is a very settled hundreds of Supreme Court decisions you will find if you will Google UB just CB remedium. Entire my seminar today's topic is also uh, motivated by this doctrine UB just EB remedium. So anyhow sir, good you asked sir 119. I have to cover it but good you asked it. But if you see many times we get this hope ki nahi, amara, amara late filing why you find late but you can always explore 119 sir. This is a worth navigating remedy. 197 is also a worth navigating remedy. So we were just concluding that writ remedy versus statutory remedy. Judicial violation, natural justice violation, fundamental right violation and constitutional validity. So now what, if I have to draw the bottom line as in our PNL accounts and balance sheet we do, PNL account. This dilemma and enigma of writ versus appeal or writ versus statutory remedy, dilemma. This conundrum goes, but one thing is very clear, sir. If I am Kapil Goel, I have to see which remedy I have to elect. I will suggest my client to go to writ and take its chance because that I know who is the judge, that I know will be heard in expeditious manner, that will be fair and transparent. Having taken my chance, even if the writ remedy does not get successful, I can come back and join the 
राइट एग्री सर सो यू यू कैन ऑलवेज एडवाइज यूर क्लाइंट इफ यू कैन ब्रिंग यूर केस विद इन दैचुरल जस्टिस वायलेशन जुडिशियल वायलेशन पैरामीटर दैट केस कैन बी टेकन टू हाई कोर्ट एंड टेस्टेड If even not successful, then you can pray the my lords. Generally, they give us liberty to join the alternate remedy. One decision which can summarize the entire conundrum, which you can note down, is the landmark, epochal, great judgment of Supreme Court of India, followed in hundreds of cases by one of the leading judge of the country, Justice Dipankar Datta Sah. The case name is Godrej Sarali Limited versus Excise and Taxation Department. Godrej and Sarali Limited. versus excise and taxation department it's a decision of 2023 sir it's a case of punjab and haryana vat law where a revision was made by some commissioner ma'am in that case where they say that this assessment done under vat is wrong assessee went to directly to punjab and haryana high court challenging the revision order of the concerned commissioner saying that it is judicially flawed punjab and high court took the stand in godre sarali case no no your rate is not maintainable you go to alternate remedy and file the appeal to the tribunal vet tribunal against the revision order supreme court reversing the punjab and high court uh, order has shown the real path you can note the proposition from godrej sarali because this is i believe the best judgment it says even if there is a remedy statutory remedy provided in a statute even then the writ petition would be maintainable when the question which is involved you note it down this is the test when the question which is involved is the pure question of law question of and there are no disputed facts involved this is very important there are no i should repeat when there is question of law and no disputed so as a chartered accountant as a tax professional as a tax consultant if i scan the facts of my case and able to see some undisputed admitted facts you can note this phrase admitted undisputed facts we daily matlab ye this phrase you have to always remember admitted and undisputed facts which are not in dispute if the case is fought on legal issue question of law on the admi on the admitted facts then the writ cannot be thrown for alternate remedy it has to be admitted yes if there are serious disputed question of fact saying in other words if there are disputed question of fact then it will not be maintained sorry or if there are serious evidence issues ki which evidence is right or wrong factual issues i believe this is a very good judgment and and this uh, judge sahab dipankar datta sahab in this godrej sarali has also said that high courts of the country should appreciate that <laughs> beauty of the remedy is not in this fact that you throw it why why i am saying why they say this landmark point they 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 differentiate between this word when the writ is maintainable and when the writ is entertained the difference between maintainability and but what is the difference what is the difference dear maintainability and entertainability Eight hey, seconds, sir. Sorry, sorry, dear. Come again. Say again. Uh. See, uh, I, I have clap for her, sir. Please. See, you are partly right, dear, but it requires like correction, like this. It maintainability means that. you are able to you are having locus tendi and you particular can file in even invoke article 226 you are the person who is entitled to invoke article 226 that maintainability goes means you are able to invoke 226 article or not in rare cases it happens that maintainability issue comes when you are not the aggrieved person you have not the locus tendi your writ is filed with delay and latches you know maintainability delay and latches you know delay and latches means if you file after huge inordinate delay the writ petition So, so th although there is no time limit in the constitution when you can file writ petition, but general standard is this: it should not be filed with latches and delay. So, delay and latches, etc., can and you are having that capacity. You are aggrieved, real aggrieved person. Now, what is maintainability? If even if a writ is maintainable, as you rightly said, if judges exercises its discretion that this is not fit case for 
then it is entertainable. So maintainability comes first, entertainability comes later. Maintainability comes when petition itself is not maintainable under the constitution. Entertainability comes when the judges exercise its discretion that and when your petition is being held and not entertainable, sir, then you cannot be thrown out of alternate remedy. They have to protect you. You, you rightly said that if you, your petition is not entertained, then recourse to alternate remedy will be automatically has to be there. Because uh, what is this UB just EB remedium? Because you can't be left remedyless. You can all note this word. You can't be left. Is this the statutory position that a taxpayer can be left remedyless? Neither here, neither there. Like a classical case came, sir, in Vivas Se Vishwas. You file some petition, VSV. Our great income tax department, first they accept that form 3. Later on, they realize, no, no, this VSV is not okay. And by that time, you have withdrawn your appeal. VSV filed, not finalized, but appeal withdrawn, whether your appeal will be reactivated or not. This is UB just EB remedium. You cannot be left. Remedy. This is the point. This is UB just EB remedy. Statute which provides remedies have to be appreciated. So this is a judgment of Telangana High Court Justice P. Sham Koshi, where VSV was held ineligible. Then Telangana High Court in the writ petition said the taxpayer's appeal has to be automatically revived. So UB just EB remedium means you can't be left. Remedy less. Where there is a right, there is a remedy. Anyhow, Godrej Sarali Limited, latest illustration and very interesting and practical, I will tell, and worth worth importance to all of us. Please note this judgment of 2024. Happy that this is judgment of calendar year. Madam, calendar year 2024. Sorry, my bad habit. I generally point out and just to connect. Rajasthan High Court. GR Infra Projects Limited, GR, G for Gujarat, R for Rajasthan, GR Infra Projects Limited versus Assistant Commissioner of Income Tax. 2nd January 2024, Rajasthan High Court Jodhpur Ben, Justice Vijay, Justice Bishnoi. Now, what was the issue? Very interesting. See, all of us are, you are aware that in new penalty, underreporting and misreporting, there is a section of immunity of penalty that is? Yes. 270? What is the form in that? Form number? Ah, 68, sir. Very right. Very right. You are all with me. Now, what does the section 270AA say? If a particular person is being assessed, sir, and his penalty is initiated for under-reporting and not misreporting, first criteria is that it is under-reporting and not. Second, he accepts the assessment and not agitated it in appeal and revision. Assessment? Accepted. No appeal. Third, whatever is the demand is being, am I with you? No, under reporting case, no appeal revision, tax. Then the penalty immunity has to be mandatorily granted. This is the scheme of the law. Now, how department has treated it when we are qualifying all these eligible criteria, three conditions, under reporting case, Tax paid, no appeal, and 143.3 oblique 144 assessment. That is also there. 143.3 something. Assessment is also okay. Falls in that. Now, question comes whether any discretion is there with the AO to reject my form. Or he can sit over this and he can say, no, no, no. I don't accept your 270 AA. It is misreporting. In you know, Panaraji, in entire country, see, lawmakers make some provision for sensible reason that it has to be given benefit. And our great income tax department executive, sorry, they say, no, 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 you are not eligible. And for the reason, most hilarious. GR Infra Projects Limited versus ACIT is a case where the immunity form of this SSE under 270AA was arbitrarily rejected by income tax department. And high court has to intervene it in. And after rejecting what they did, they, they imposed penalty on this ma'am, this SSE. And when the SSE go to high court and challenge the penalty order also and this rejection of form, department said, no, no, ask them to go in appeal. There is a statutory. This was a preliminary objection of income tax department. High court in GR Infra Project applying Godrej Sarali said your preliminary objection is overruled. Why? Because we find your both penalty orders and immunity rejection to be jurisdictionally 
flawed and it's a pure question of law no undisputed facts are there so he will not ask assessee to go to a appellate remedy we will decide the issue in writ petition that is first point 270 a 270 double a penalty immunity rejection has been held to be decided in writ petition remedy is accepted writ remedy now on merits what they say sir this is applying our delhi high court two important landmark orders one chandler electric and second is prem infrastructure these are two delhi high court orders on 270 aa chandler electric and prem brothers infrastructure rajasthan high court said in this case ki why legislature brought 270 aa to see many people will not come out of well, will will we should not be given benefit of it or deserving people should be given what is the objective of the lawmaker to make this section let us first understand that yes rather to give succor and relief to the deserving person sir but judge said ki is that income tax department uh, now trying to prevail over the legislative intent by making it a redundant so high court said ki this rejection grounds of mis uh, now what is the very serious points are you to all know no down difference between under reporting and this is a million dollar question man this is the areas where lawyers like kapil goel get cases and cases and cases where people like in the income tax department always feel every case is of saab 270 capital a sub section 9 has six clauses now in this case judge saab has said are you have you taken this much of pain to pinpoint in which six clauses of 270a subsection 9 this case falls sir sir hame to nahi pata tha sir aisa to hota hai re act mein likha hai act says misreporting can be only in that a b c d e f 270a subsection 9 a b c d e f six contingencies sir no seven you and six are different just said ki tell us where you have said this falls in 270a 9 which clause This is again a very sorry state of affairs. Department treats a case as misreporting, but is totally, what do you say, blank to pinpoint particular pigeonhole in which that case falls. Just said nothing doing. Go, go. Your case gets quashed. Assessee's immunity gets accepted and penalty gets deleted. Shri Ram. This is how this two uh, seventy double A under reporting and mis reporting difference. So, sir, judge has tried to call out, and this is not tribunal order, sir. This is an high court decision where judge has taken pains to pinpoint that you can't invoke mis reporting in a light hearted manner. You have to be very careful. Department has to be very careful to shift the case from under reporting to, and that that too when you are throwing me from my immunity. and i know you, you all are very learned you will appreciate that when loss to loss case is there no demand is created this is a perfect case for going to immunity because there is no loss to are you aware about this na loss to loss case when assessment may loss you file written loss your loss is reduced but no demand is created and under reporting penalty is there this is the best case to go for 270 I hope my point is taken note of. So, so this is a remedy to seventy double A. This has to be given effect to in a la, in a benevolent sense. But income tax department try to de-escalate the cases and shift it from under reporting to mis reporting so that two seventy double A gets. Judge is said, please please appreciate the legislative idea behind this provision, sir. Are you making these provisions only for sake of paper, or are you making them for giving? really so this is 2024 i believe one of the very good landmark orders where high court division bench of rajasthan high court has rightly and beautifully pointed out the dip, basic difference between under reporting and mis reporting so 270 double a i was the one idea to discuss this judgment sir now i was thinking in my mind what are the special remedies to make my topic slightly differently discussed that can we just i ask you first can we use section 133 and 131 you can note can we use section 133 as oblique 131 as a remedy what is 133 133 is the power to the income tax officer to make inquiries 131 is the power to the income tax officer to give power summons etc 
So can 131 and 133 be used as a remedy? But not only answer yes, sir. In which cases where we generally face problems? Yes. Sir has rightly said, have a clap for him, sir, please. So the co co case goes like this. Again, back to Kapil, back, Kapil Goel taking loan from Panna Raji. Now the low lender has become, sir, slightly relations becomes. Ah, yeah, what? S O U R, sorry. Ah, I see. Yes. Pranaji, sorry, I'm saying this. This is called case study. So he does not help me in my assessment. Now, I say assessing officers are you faceless AO, FAO. Please use, please ask your verification unit is there. One unit is assess. This is like ICU units. I sorry. Assessment unit, technical unit, and verification unit. Verification unit is given the job of making verification. So I, as a couple goel to discharge my owners under 68, can ask the income tax authority to use its power under section. 131 and 133 to make inquiries from my creditor. Now, department generally says that six, using 133 and 131 is our prerogative. It cannot be done at the behest of the. That is totally wrong. Courts have said these powers are there to do justice, to find out the truth. These are not only the dolls of the assessing officer, these are there the statutory remedies. Wherever justice has to be done and truth has to be found out, 133 and 131 has to be used. Justice Vineet Kothari Saab, he is from Rajasthan. He was Madras High Court Chief Justice at one time. His lordship in the income tax cases in Madras High Court has written some orders. Reminding to income tax authorities and passing strictures that income tax department is not uh, allowed to use 68 and all these powers without using 131 and 133 in judicious way. So 131, 133 can be used as a remedy. Department, I will give another illustration. I made a payment. Let us say again, I am now making payment to you, sir. I have taken from you. I am now. Panna Rajji, now I am advocate practicing. He is my chartered accountant. He is doing my tax audit. I gave fees to him. He charged me. Sorry. He should not have, but he charged me. I paid him. I did not deduct. PDS. Now, Kapil Goel assessment assessing officer is saying, Mr. Goel, why not 40A? IA should be invoked on you and expenditure should be. Before assessing officer, my chartered accountant itself says, hey, why uh, this is, you are not tax on my payment? I will disallow. So, when assessing officer poses me this question in the assessment, I ask, sir, okay, let me try and get this form 26A. You all know form 26A? That is the form in... What, no, not AS, ma'am. Form 26 is the certificate of the chartered accountant that confirming that recipient has disclosed the same in his hands. But relations are not good. He is not cooperating. I asked the assessing officer to use his powers under 131 and 133 to elicit from him whether he has filed the return and whether he has shown that particular thing in his. It is perfectly justified. I am there, sir. Two cases we discussed, section 68, borrowing lending, where 133 and 131 can be used at the behest of the... So that is the point. Only that, sir. See, what, what we mean by assessment? For your answer in your query, you have to also appreciate one fundamental point. Ki what is the nature of tax assessment? It is a quasi-judicial function where, which is governed broadly by Article 265 that no tax can be collected and levied except by authority of law. So that Article 265 mandates also applies here. You are not talking in air. There is a very serious background behind it ki why 133 and 131 can be used at the behest of the assessee. Yes, I appreciate practically many times assessing officer does not use it. But if you request it and still they do not do it, I am telling sir, appellate authorities will take it head on. So the request can go from your side. If you are not able to get the cooperation, like in 41 subsection 1 also remission and cessation of liability cases also this helps. Are you with me, sir? So there are practical, I give, this can be multiplied, but 133 and 131 can be used as remedy to the 
taxpayer. Second, oh, special type remedy, which otherwise does not look as remedy, but can be used. Tell me, 144A, how many times you have used 144A, sir, in assessment? 144A. You know 144A is the power given in the assessment where assessee can request joint commissioner to give directions to the assessing authority to make assessment in the right manner. That is section 144 capital. There is a practical very serious issue here. In one of our cases, my younger brother Sandeep wrote to faceless department Pannarajji that please uh, refer because AO was becoming very high handed. So we asked the assessing authority in FAO, sir, to please refer the case to his corresponding joint commissioner under the 144A. Can you appreciate what he's wrote back? He says in faceless assessment, there is no 144A. There is, hey, hey. now my mind got, when he told me, Sandeep told me, Ki, bhai, this is, they are saying like this. I again read the law book. Nowhere after faceless assessment 144B, 144A is drawn from, withdrawn from statute. Sir, it is not omitted, it is as it is, like Angad's flag. 144A is the remedy which is as alive as it was there earlier pre-faceless regime. Meaning thereby in faceless regime also 144A is available and can be invoked by the SSE. Yes, definitely as our seniors have told us 144A, see, my young friends are also sitting, we don't generally use 144A in normal cases. We use it when terms are not getting at par. So 144A is generally used in case of serious situations when you are in ICU or emergency is a kind of a situation. But it is available in faceless. I am very serious. And 144A has a judicious role. Justice C. Saramanan Saab, rather in one of the cases I was reading in MRF or somebody else, matter Madras, I court took a very serious stand. 144A cannot be lightheartedly. See Uttamji, if you file in faceless 144A petition, it is the duty of the faceless officer to first refer it to Concerned authority, and then he will also join you virtually, maybe in anonymous mode. But 144A is not like that, it is made to dustbin. So, there is a very important remedy. No, sir, we are in right now. Sorry, you are, you are right. They don't refer it, they made the arbitrary assessment. We have to knock the doors of the High Court. High Court has given a stay. But I am telling you, these people are under very serious serious confusion that after 144 capital B, sir, maybe, I am sorry, it's my humble sense, 144B governs faceless system. 144B does not say that 144A is redundant now, OTOs. 144A is not made redundant, sir, sorry, nugatory. Where does 144B says that joint commissioner will, see, let me take it to another end if you have touched it. Supposingly, department which has made lot of assessments in last two, three years in faceless assessment. This is very interesting, Pannaraji. It's a very important issue. 144B faceless assessment, can it be revised under section 263? The preposition is this. All those assessments which are happening under section 144B, Uttamji, you also listen it carefully. 144B assessment, if it is done, sir. 263 does not incorporate 144B as such. Why it has to be specifically inserted first? Because team-based assessment under 144B is not done by one officer. It is done with the team and group. So, can CIT in its traditional orthodox power of revision intervene in an assessment which is a faceless assessment and a team-based assessment without there being a special and specific provision for the same? Some high courts have admitted rate and given stay in Bombay. Yes, this looks to be a very important point. 144B assessment cannot be revised under, per se under. This is an open issue, not finally decided. Interim orders have been given by some high courts in the country. But on the other side, I was submitting that faceless assessment, 144A is nowhere diluted, sir. And 144A is a right of the SSE to go to the higher authority to see that he, he can nudge or ex exhort or besiege the AO, the Joint Commissioner range head, of that faceless team, he that right and justified. For example, AO is not giving me cross examination. AO is not giving me natural justice. This relied upon material. AO is not providing the back material. So I can always say to the faceless assessment team, he please refer my case to joint commission so that you can be guided properly by your higher authority under the law that how the rightful assessment can be made. 
they have not done it sir in a my case we have to go in read petition let us see how finally but we are still protected under interim protection of the high court sir another remedy which i was seeing can be used but sometimes department as we see that approaches some sections in the way like see 139 subsection 4 and subsection 5 read uh, this really uh, revised return belated return and updated return 139 4 139 and 139 8a is also a remedy again sub if you are able not able to file the return in time you can elect this remedies also but i have another question out of box slightly supposingly an assessee sir who has to file a return he has missed all these buses he has missed the bus of 139 1 he has missed the train of 139 4 5 he has missed, missed the bus of update, uh, aircraft of 139 80 updated he has missed everything but now his consents or so might might be his attention has gone to this point he was to file the return his case may come under 148 before coming under 148 he files a computation note it this is a very important thing which i am discussing now one of the very important points which i wanted to discuss today ki without filing return under 139 can i file a computation on a plain paper saying that this is my income and this is my tax liability and interest and i pay chalan somebody can ask this is under what provision then the another question counter question will come do i need any provision to clean my soul meri atma ko clean karne ke liye mujhe kisi kanun ka jurth hai i say in english if i need I, do i need any provision under the law to clean my consents coming back to my query facts i made a plain paper computation with the help of my chartered accountant he makes my tax liability i remit it with the interest now to process this computation wala pa department issues 148 i filed the return in response to 148 now you noted the same return income which i filed in my plain paper yes computation absolutely you are with me sir the same computation income which i filed i filed in response to return under 148 sir keep this question on hold for a moment sir <laughs> this is a valid question but keep it on hold i don't want to disc matlab please keep it on hold so query goes like this you make a computation you file the tax you make the payment of tax they people want to process it and regularize it as i say reg for regularization they issue 148 i submit the same thing which i said in the as it is no no change now assessment also goes on the same amount the first immediate question will come whether penalty can be levied or not will it be a case for penalty sir 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 is saying no right sir it is a classical case of surrender of income or disclosure of income before detection it is a classical case where tax payer on his own without being coerced or forced by the tax authorities has come forward and pay the taxes and department is never that gracious that they will refund me these taxes sir if they have problem with my computation and payment of tax will they refund me my sir, I, i have never seen in my 20 years career you all all ki that they are they have magnanimously they say it is wrong it is not kabool to us kabool to us kabool you know na kabool 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 to refund me refund me refund me but we don't want to refund you whatever comes is off this is been told taught to us by seniors and our experience ki that whatever income tax department gets that's locked in the exchequer question then comes sir just a moment sir just a moment please i am so penalty part it is clear if you need any citation suresh chand mittal 251 itr page 19 supreme court of india that income surrendered before detection by tax department is not can be cannot be subject matter of penalty now taking sir i will take your question now sir ask me one question ki mr goel can there be legitimate or justified escapement of income once there is the income which is being offered to tax there is a point see 
I would say it like this, Ki Mr. Goel, can department to regularize it, can use invoke 148 or is there any other remedy to the department? You know it. There is another provision which they should have used. If I was to be supposed to be a written filer, I am a non-filer and can department call for written under 148 or is there any other provision in the statute? 142. No date. 142 can always be used and it is recommended to be used by CBDT in its in its NMS instruction, non-filer management system instruction. There is instruction of CBDT that in NMS cases, 148 cannot be issued directly. You have to first issue. In our practical experience in non-filer cases, we have seen department making high jump to but this is, sorry sir, this is preposterous. 148 cannot be used to get the return because it is like this you are putting cart before the horse or horse before the car so your question is answered 148 is technically not right otherwise if they say yes that uh, we have to what you say there is some if, if you have to say let us say according to them 100 rupees should have been the income offered and you offered 50 rupees so to tax more 50 rupees they can invoke 148 but just for processing that computation, can they do 148? I believe no. I hope you get my distinction. I'm not making it too complex, Uttam Bhai. See, my summation is simple. We learn one thing in going in high court to make it to, sorry, you are my elder. You see, whenever we make any submission, to keep it more simple is the point. So I said him simply that ultimately escapement of income requires that there is something more to be offered. If income is same, taxable amount is to be same, then 148 cannot be used. Probably till today, lawmakers have not said that ki for this kind of computation, there should be a separate mechanism. Somebody asked me, ki, Mr. Goel, then what will be the what will be the sense of updated return? Because updated return, if you offer something, how much is the amount package? There is a package. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there is a package. And that package is very costly package, sir. There is an inbuilt penalty in that. The beauty of that package is, to me, like simple, man, I don't understand 139 I don't understand, sorry. Many people ask me, if you speak on 139 I don't know, please. Recuse me. Because that is a section, sir, which is as typically made. I don't know how that liability is decided and computed. Maybe as a chartered accountant, you could not have difficulty, but as a, layman, a limited sense understanding man, I don't know. If you disclose 100 rupees in updated return, what will be the tax liability? Whatever, it will be exorbitant. This very much disproportionate. If I go by this computation route, what will be the liability? Somebody said me, Mr. Goel, read 270A. You can note on somebody asked me, chartered accountant senior, Ki Mr. Goel, section 270A, subsection 2 says, if in a case where you have not filed return and first time you file return in 148, then your amount which you will offer in 148 return will be deemed to have been underreported. But there is a, if there is an in inlet clause, there is an exit clause also, 270A, subsection 6, clause A says, 270A, subsection 6, clause A says, if you say that there is a bona fide, what do you say, explanation then penalty can be waived also. There is outgo also. So this is a case where you have voluntarily, ultimately at the end of the day, department cannot shy away from this fact that they have not detected it. You have yourself offered it. So, yes, sir. Sir, I'm happy. You are very learned and mature, sir. See, there is no mechanism as such. You can, let me practically submit to you, you will appreciate a lot. Being our elder, you see, if you have to make a computation, if then you can also send it by post to the income tax, your job. You got the hint? Or I need to elaborate? I need to elaborate what I said. I made a computation. I have to send it through uh, this post and courier and post, and then it is complete. It is their job to get it further uh, taken forward. As far as I am concerned, I did my bit. I made a computation on a plain paper. I computed my tax liability. I made the payment to government of India in the exchequer, which is being accepted as such. Yes. Mode of information is not, I don't know. Sorry, with due respect. Mode of information is not critical here. You can send email also of a covering letter of this computation to the JAO. 
or you can also sign ultimate thing is to save from penalty and reduce the tax liability in the within the four corners of the law yes sir mm -hmm. but that is brother same thing sir how do you difference between tds and see you there is a section in the tds chapter which says that tax deducted will be deemed to have been tax paid by the am i right so so, so tds is not a donation today tds is not a some dharam khata payment sir these are great income tax officers sir sir sorry please bear what is saying see these great sorry with due respect sir these great income tax officers who say that if you will file return then they will give you tds credit is saying ram something else and ravan something else well this is these people don't have a elementary understanding sorry rudimentary you know elementary and rudimentary principle of law is this if something has gone to the coffers of the income tax department sorry it has to be given there is no not see to take the relief in the hands of the law there is see we are told when we were nursery in the law na in the sense we are told that procedure is handmade of justice procedure is handmade of telangana high court andhra pradesh high court in one of the cases where dear assessee was not given due tds credit and there they say ki sab the person who had deducted tds like kingfisher type you know section 205 you noted down section 205 what it says once tax is deducted there can be there is bar on recovery of the same from the 205 income tax act 1961 so, so there is no doubt scantle of doubt brother if a tax has been deducted and has there is a sufficient evidence in your possession to show that tax has been deducted while remittance to you then income tax officer cannot say by any means and sermon of reasoning ki that once you will file return only when tds credit shall be given it means if you take it to the other side then then the, that great assessing officer feels that all those all those people whose tax have been deducted and they are not filing return let us say agriculture is on land acquisition cases their tds becomes government's money and they are and government sovereign can take tax without authority of law in violation of article 265 as an unjust enrichment it is not unjust enrichment grassim industries bombay high court for you can note this citation sir 458 itr page 1 bombay high court grassim industries latest order this is not their property sir 458 itr page 1 bombay high court grassim industries and there is one constitutional article also article 300 capital a that no proper no person can be deprived of its property without process, due process Article three hundred A of Constitution of India. Refund is your property, sir. Money TDS. You can't be uh, deprived of your TDS money without due process. That is Article three hundred Capital A of Constitution of India. But Krasim Industries is Bombay High Court four fifty eight ITR page one. Good, you ask this question. See, our income tax department is now, oh, sir. See what he is saying. You make a point that TDS will be given benefit when you will file return. Amazing. Amazing. This is a case study for next seminar. When we stand in high court, Kanaraji, and this kind of cases comes before we start speaking, judges comes down. A great, some sensible judges there, na. It's a roller coaster for department. Is that do you believe this country's taxpayer is uh, what you expect of taxpayer? Is it ease of doing business? That is Harish Chand Bharti, Allahabad High Court has written. If you government says that we have to give ease of doing business, is it ease of doing business? Ease of doing business is not term coined by Kapil Goel or you. It is a term given by government of the day. Then they have to walk the talk. Sorry, this is sufficient. This much is. <laughs> But sir, see <laughs> the irony is this: Rule thirty seven, capital B, B A is a rule in the income tax rule book, which says that there has to be kundli milan of deductor and deductee. Rule thirty seven. This is a very amazing rule. it says that person who is claiming tds and the person who is deducting tax his accounts do both have to be matched but there are situations where deductor has become defaulter for no fault of deductee 
can deductly be deprived of the credit due credit in violation of art section 205 etc and can rule cross the act and where that principle goes procedure is a handmaid of justice ultimately tax has tedious credit has to be given and there is a situation where let us say in a given case a person who in whose hands a tax is deducted he is not claiming it there happens na, that if tax is deducted let us say name of mr x and mr y files the return it happens generally in amalgamation cases type of cases there is a particular peculiar situation where the company in whose name tax is deducted cannot claim it somebody else is claiming but definitely two people are not claiming the credit for the same there is sure now department has a serious problem who will give tds credit to the person in whose name it is there are four five high courts in the country has said that what is the problem to you if that person has given no objection in whose name tax has been deducted to give credit to him what is the problem to you so there are cases sir like that also remedies people say tell us mr goel some remedy where litigation is not there and still we get the remedy i'm discussing speaking on remedy na so some people ask me some senior professional ki mr goel tell us a remedy where do we don't have to litigate before a court and we get the justice sorry sir that is not the day i wish i wish seriously there is a remedy without litigation and if you ask me i am a small man i can say with all humility at my command that will be true ramrajya ki where a person is given due justice without litigation and you sir i have spoken a lot about these things and at the end of the day there has been some some serious issues on tax prosecutions also remedy against prosecutions i it's also serious issue panaraji my time is over 5 minutes more 5 minutes permit it sir sorry i will end with this sir see why i said to thought about prosecutions because of lately lot many tax prosecutions have surfaced especially in tds area and especially where what has happened and sir i will take your proportionality point also in a 2 minutes sir sir has said 2 minutes proportionality 2 minutes this now what is the uh, essence of this entire prosecution of tds i find that an ssc let us say deducted the tax somehow failed to deposit within the given time limit paid it later on itself with due interest government accepted it as it is and kept it later on after 4 5 years all of a sudden their eyes goes the commissioner tds or department that the ssc has deducted the tax but deposited it do voluntarily do before detection by the and after there is a practical case which my chamber has just got sir a company which is being given tds prosecution notice under 276b of financial year 1718 in 2023 december after 5 years so i was asked by the client hey, mr goel what is the remedy i said take an objection see you have to note it down whenever you find any notice any proceedings where you feel as a chartered accountant or a consultant that they are without jurisdiction we must take preliminary jurisdictional objection before the unconcerned authority we must make an habit for all seniors but i'm not teaching but i'm just submitting beseeching nudging that if a proceedings are initiated by the tax authority let us say of tds prosecution then i can make a good reply which will contain apart from factual aspects the submissions on jurisdictional objection that these proceedings are without jurisdiction and where i will say sir where is the offense of 276b this money has already been 5 years earlier been deposited to you with the due interest you have not even levied any penalty can you initiate now at this belated stage this 276b or proposed prosecution of tax tds prosecution you will say mr goel you have any precedent there are half dozen decisions from jharkhand high court and one decision of this odisha high court you may all know this is reported order and worth reading dn homes is a tds prosecution being quashed by odisha high court in writ petition where this uh, entire tds prosecution saga is being discussed this is reported in sorry i just kept it just this is the citation is 
डीएन होम्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया डीएन होम्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया डीएन होम्स डी फॉर दार्जिलिंग एंड फॉर नागालैंड डीएन होम्स प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया फोर फिफ्टी नाइन आई टी आर पेज नंबर टू हंड्रेड इलेवन फोर फिफ्टी नाइन आई टी आर पेज नंबर टू हंड्रेड इलेवन इन दिस केस द उड़ीसा हाईकोर्ट सर हैज ऑल्सो डिस्कस द टी डी एस प्रोजिक्यूशन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दिस सेक्शन टू सेवेंटी एट डबल ए रिजनेबल कॉस्ट दैट इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी डिपोजिटेड विद यू इंटरेस्ट वॉलेंटरिली बिफोर डिटेक्शन एंड यूर एंड फॉर सी वन आस्पेक्ट इज दिस की दिस प्रोसीडिंग आर इनिशियटेड आफ्टर इन ऑर्डिनेट डिले सेकेंड आस्पेक्ट इज दिस की यू हैव uh you have you already deposited the interest and department has accepted it and now after 5 years they say we want to have prosecution and the idea of prosecution is to get compounding fees from you the ultimate idea is because that is seriously compounding is horrible so to avoid that compounding to be going that is why i'm taking this point you can take a issue of belated belated and delayed issue or initiation of proceedings second point is voluntary compliance third point is reasonable cause under section 278 double a you say mr goel could what could be reasonable cause courts have said including dn homes and one decision of jharkhand high court also you can note on tds this is landmark order reported dev multimedia jharkhand high court quashing tds prosecution in writ dev multimedia private limited and in this case also the court said if tds amount is voluntarily deposited with interest department should not go for 276b prosecution especially after belated delayed time sir this is dev multimedia and it's also reported in uh, sir and uh, there also the court has said that it is a reasonable cause that fsc has himself deposited it without department being telling sir hmm oh see but what is the offense being told to you now penalty is being levied under which hmm and two zero says that higher tds should be deducted see as a as a lawyer i can submit to you one thing only sir which i which immediately comes to my mind with all due humbleness you can note this preposition theory of doubtful penalization this is a theory which supreme court justice sanjeev khanna who is next going to be chief justice of the country has accepted theory of doubtful penalization means ki when there are when there can be two when there is a serious gray area that what could be the right position of the law and taxpayer has followed one area one point plausible area then you cannot penalize him this is known as theory of doubtful meaning thereby in doubtful areas you cannot penalize this 20% rate is a penalty is out of a thing nahi nahi sir aap usko sorry with due respect you see i appreciate what see what is your perspective to say that mr goel it is not penalty that it is it is it is just, just like a you may say ki mr goel it is a ministerial thing it is an automatic thing no you read the there is a some kind of failure being attached to it then you escalate from normal tds to i am very humbly saying as i perceive it there may be perception difference so so see some sort he what you understand what he said he said ki mr goel there was a genuine what do you say genuine possible genuine uh, perception problem ki we have to go for 20% or he has a pen number or not or he is being to be uh, So, so so see i sum simplified if i am if if i am to be deducted tax as a kapil goel and tax deductor has a genuine uh, what you say difficulty to fathom whether it is a non pen case or it is a pen case hmm. so it is a case of deemed not pen deemed not pen deemed non pen ए सर उत्तम जी प्लीज ओके हम्म ओके हम्म ओहो हम्म 
so it is like this uh, i got it it is like this sir it is not the case where he is not having pen at all it is the case where he has pen but department is having a second version is that it is a case of invalid pen it is not a case of non existent pen if i am right sir you are totally protected by theory of doubtful penalization sir now i am pakka see why because theory of doubtful penalization justice sanjeev khinna in the income tax order you can note it the judgment 370 itr jds apparel it's a tds case law 40 ia where in income tax delhi high court judgment jds apparel j for jagran d for darjeeling as for switzerland jds apparel private limited 370 itr theory of doubtful penalization has been applied by delhi high court justice sanjeev khanna when he was in the high court delhi high court now he is a supreme court senior judge going to become supreme court chief justice so sanjeev khanna sahab has written many orders sir where he has said that theory of doubtful penalization applies in tax laws also the simple reason is this there there are areas sir where there can be genuine difference of perceptions you say that this is the right situation and somebody says and there is no clarity which 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 is to which is the right position so if taxpayer has taken one plausible stand which is not totally outlandish then no pen, no 20% sir no 201 demand sir 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 hamara topic say, sorry sorry every month department is issuing notice that is why the kapil goel is there that is why pains are there that is why so much lecture is there that is why i am speaker that is why i am called momento given so all these things are there sir that is why everything is happening that is why i am i am i am successful in a sense that i go to high court and win cases for you proportionality one moment sir please note sir ask me is our senior is anand anand ji sir in all these remedies you please sir panara ji you also note this point so he asked me and he took a special interest in my various lectures which i did online i took this issue of theory of proportionality in tax laws what is proportionality theory of proportionality emanates from article 14 of indian constitution it says that if somebody has to be punished or uh, what do you say adjudicated or assessed even under tax law then he has to be punished in proportionate to the offense that is the essence of the test now you can't use a sledge hammer where something a small knife can work are you getting my point so the process which has to be applied in a particular situation has to be proportionate to the now how it applies in tax laws in very serious senses in cases of 115 bb in 68 if you can assess me on net income under business ad will you do that or will you apply 68 and 115 bb i am giving a concrete situation there is a there is a uh, case where assesses all trading operations are recorded in books of accounts department instead of rejecting my books under 145 subsection 3 instead of applying profit rate they say my entire sales or purchases are bogus under 68 69 etc 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 and then apply 11 it is totally against the principle of proportionality because ultimately they are not doubting i am in business ultimately they are not doubting that there is no trading outside the but without adopting the course of 145 subsection 3 noted this section sir which is manifestation of proportionality they they to invoke extra tax from the taxpayer arbitrarily take the case to 68 and apply 115 this is this is totally against proportionality second this is in income tax law in cases where under reporting even cannot be initiated you initiate misreporting you impose 200% penalty that is totally disproportionate sir supposingly i have disclosed everything and there is a genuine difference of opinion between the department it's a debatable issue contentious issue can you take this case under misreporting disallowance of expenditure this is also against principle of proportionality if supposingly on an offense which is a venial see now the classical judgment of the tax law which is on proportionality is hindustan steel limited versus state of odisha 83 itr page number 26 it says if the breach done by a particular taxpayer is venial in nature or mere technical in nature without any prejudice to the revenue then no penalty can be levied i repeat 83 itr page 26 hindustan steel limited versus state of odisha it's a classical law hindustan steel limited versus state of odisha brother just just bear with me it is a very important question See, sir, eighty-three ITR twenty-six Hindustan Steel Limited versus State of Odisha is the best judgment in the tax law, which which is based on inherently based on test of proportionality, where Supreme Court says if you don't make any compliance, 
but that compliance do not cause any prejudice to it happens in hundreds of cases and daily we find penalty notices so the doctrine of proportionality says hindustan steel limited says 83 itr 26 says if there is no prejudice to the revenue and the breach is in the nature of venial nature it's a pro technical breach only then no penalty can be this judgment has been applied by supreme court in various other laws along with test of proportionality justice sikri justice ramana and v ramana saab if you want to know there is a judgment of supreme court of india by the bench of justice ak sikri and justice nv ramana in excel crop private limited it's a competition commission judgment monopoly penalty was levied excel crop supreme court decision by justice nv ramana and justice ak sikri excel crop where hindustan steel limited is applied and proportionality is applied and penalty is deleted on doctrine of now you ask me mr goel whether in vicarious liability under section 179 against the direct delinquent director former director of the company at that time you can definitely use it there see ultimately the test of proportionality is based on what principle the principle of uh, that balancing that what is the offense and what is the punishment now in 179 if you say that the ex director has done something then you have to see ultimately while applying 179 courts have said especially bombay high court in what one of the decisions which has been approved by supreme court also that in 179 proceedings it has to be very carefully seen that the concerned director who is being asked to make payment of taxes was he in, was he really responsible for the what use is somewhere he fails to pay the tax the company fails fail fail and the conduct of the director has to be nexus has to be established then you can say director is responsible for making the but you say he was just merely director so he has to pay it is not the law there has to be in the show cause in 179 this has to be brought out ki what is the material in the position of the revenue which says that this due to this inaction of the director this company's dues could not be thank you sir we law i am very blessed that to be here and you uh, you bear with me for such a long time thank you all of you sir a big thank you for uh, your time and uh, despite all odds you could reach here and reach the minds and uh, hearts of all of us and it, this is one of the greatest moments for me as chairman of sirc to have you here sir all the stalwarts of uh, yesterday all the four stalwarts with you who are here i have made our day very very uh, useful and our efforts very very purposeful also so thank you very much all of you for uh, being here uh, to view a small material is there no sir is given 19 pages material you you shared some material no sir yes sir i sent the family taking to you yeah sir so me oh then i'll i'll share it sir i have not i have not yes thank you no no not necessary sir i have been busy in this no no i have not doubt uh, it yes thank you thank you sir so, moment yeah, you come <laughs> Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Kapil Goel, sir, for the wonderful, energetic, and engaging presentation. Uh, yeah, huge round of applause once again for Kapil Goel, sir. Uh, requesting Panara, sir, to present him with a memento, please. Requesting Secretary, sir, also to join on the dais, please. So with that, we have come to the conclusion of our today's national conference. Uh, requesting Secretary Sir to formally propose a vote of thanks. Only one minute. So.
thank you warm good evening to one and all i think last two days we have a knowledge feast along with the 30 percentage of cp our completion of this quarter so i thank all the speakers and participants and mma and our uh, uh, employees uh, sarc employees who supported this uh, conference so thank you thank you one and all yeah we will wind up today's uh, national uh, conference by national anthem let us all raise for national anthem please Thank you. 